am Coy Jandro, and this is Comic Book Shop, and we are here at Golden Apple Comics in the heart of Hollywood, right on Melrose, and we are about to be joined by David Harbour, yes, Hellboy himself. Wow, it's brutal. I love it. Right? Like it's yeah, I love brutality. I, I apparently will be in the new uh, standalone Black Widow Marvel movie, which I'm very excited about. Wow, that's beautiful. It is time for some sweet, sweet comic book shopping. Welcome back, everybody. Friday for Collider Live. It's a two-hour show today, an extravaganza. And joining us today in studio, well, I think Makuka's got the poops, so he'll be here in a little bit. But joining us, chewing an egg sandwich directly into the mic before the show starts, is the one and only Dark Soul Darina. Hello. Hello. How are you? Buenos dias. Good morning. You, you How is that, everyone? You don't mind that I call you Dark Soul, right? You don't have a band that's going to be affected by your name or anything? No. Okay. No, so I Dark don't mind. Arena works? No. Too okay. soon. And you can call me whatever <laughs> <laughs> you can call me whatever you want you, if you watch the thing, Christian. So Well, we'll have to see how that works out. Mark Yodius Rileyus with the hair of the, the South coming in hot. How you doing? Hair of the South. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. Thank you. Mike, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I will tell you this. That what? Um, I realize the kind of uh, I think Alex is a little bit I'm gonna say passive aggressive, but I'm gonna say he's a quiet angry. You would never know That's he was dangerous. angry. Well because Every morning I usually come in and he's because he sets it up. He's got the pen waiting for me, the water. There wasn't fucking jack shit here this morning. <laughs> not, not a thing. I had to get. Uh, Is he here today? He's, he's sending here. a message. He's here. He has, uh, no pen. Alex, did you do that on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to hang out with Cody today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's it. So you just fly by the seat of your pants, huh? <laughs> So you, you made the decision I would have made. Yeah, you know what's funny is I went into that Facebook group yesterday. There was a big debate yesterday. It was, it was really funny. It was a big debate on if if Alex was being too touchy, or if if, if Roxy was right, uh, if he was. If he People was being were too, really involved. It was it was like a, a seventy two comment thread, right? And they were just Jesus. going. They were just going, and I was reading it, just kind of watching and laughing, like the emperor in the back. Of course you and, were. And as do it. A, do it. Reading the comments. <laughs> I was, that was the worst one I've ever done. Um, <laughs> that was but, pretty good. Nah, it wasn't great. But watching it and then uh -huh. start, kind of seeing why they thought he was ta he was taking it too serious. And, and then there was one comment, one voice of reason popping in there, going, "Guys, listen. This is what this guy. This is the reason why he's focusing on his band. I understand. You gotta let him have his thing. Yeah. And, and it was one Cody Hall. Yeah, that's right. The, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, Cody. Cody Hall dropped the grenade and then ran out of the room. Absolutely. That's what he did. Not <laughs> that's one what you do. Yeah. Not one comment after that. Is that correct? That's absolutely true. I ran out of there. <laughs> right. You just threw the stink bomb <laughs> in. Let it. Take bye. Yeah, you let the he, stink bomb hit the Carvel and then you ran. Deleted exactly. his Wait, Facebook I have account. Another, I have another grenade for you, Cody. Uh -oh. So I was talking to one of the wingers and I asked why they hadn't invited Christian Harloff to their show. Mm. And they said, uh, one of them said that because you wouldn't go. That's not yeah, true. you wouldn't go. I wouldn't ah, go. When Cody do you, agrees. When, when do you? When no, do just you, for like logistic reasons. It's Monday nights that we tape. Monday nights are easier than weekends. When people really? ask, when people ask yeah. me weekends, yeah, because Monday nights they say I got a screening. But oh. now you're saying you would do it, so yeah. now you have okay. to do it if they invite you. Yeah, well, we the, have it recorded. It, the question is, who will ask me first? Will it be JT Movie Things, which I don't know if that's a show anymore, or the fucking Wangers? <laughs> he, <laughs> I don't even know. He had a he had a deep thought. JT did, and oh, uh, yeah. hashtag JT Movie Things. So good for him. He's still yeah. pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there he there is. He is. Hey. Hey. The poops. Hey. What happened? Yeah. You okay there? Um, <laughs> How's your butt? Josh, Josh McCoogie coming. What yeah. happened? Did you eat something bad? I think and I ate something last night. No, no, no. I think oh. I ate something last night. Food uh, poisoning? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just took I, was, I was walking The curl the... is doing something special uh, this morning. Oh, is it? It's doing something special. <laughs> I like it. You, I was you walking really... out the door and the man is like, have a good day. I was like, I'm going to poop my pants and I ran back to the <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. And that was that. Yeah, yeah, well, mind you, I didn't say that. I said he had stomach issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, every day, whether you're sick, stomach issues, or whatever, <laughs> this guy is always like, he's got the shits. Yeah. He's got the shit. I had the flu. I had the yeah. flu once, and, and he's like, oh, right, he's got the shit. And then the I get all the people. No, I didn't. I was sick. <laughs> I Did was you have sick home. the flu? No, I, oh. I was sick with the flu, so it was body aches and a fever. <laughs> and then everybody on, on the Facebook page was like, Hey, Riley, how are the shits? <laughs> and I'm like, I, actually, I don't are know. Are you concentrating on your band? Should I not worry about the shits? Yes, please. All I'm right. starting the band. The, well, the, you just have fans the that Riley care five. about you a lot. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure they do. Riley and, the <laughs> Riley and the shits. <laughs> Riley and the shits. Riley and the shits. Should be the name of one of the Riley Roundtable episodes. Yeah. Riley but and anyway, the shits. speaking yeah. of the wingers, uh, two things to plug. You guys should all watch their short. 
the comedy sh- short that they did, the, the, the Uber, Uber one, one. Oh, yeah, it's it's really fantastic. funny. It's if you guys fantastic. haven't watched it, okay. and then Cody agrees. Um, and then oh, no um, I'm also on a uh, oh, Don't Be a Beardo podcast. This is what it's all and about. Is that show still a thing? No, I don't want to promote it, but Beardo wants me to. When is that? Okay. I didn't know it was coming out. No, it came out last week. I, I didn't just know he was him. Cody. He, when, when does he still do that show? Like every three months or so. <laughs> every three yeah. months. He just sure, came I'll back with this one. Yeah. But it, we get a little bit personal yeah. and it's a lot of stuff. Oh, well, it's very so. similar. So, uh, don't be a beardo is very similar to whether it's one on one that I did or or the Napsock files. It's, right. it's in yeah. that vein where he sits down and just kind of gets to know somebody. Yeah, so he's a good interview too. He, he got he, to you before I did. Yeah, see? he did. Skunk. Uh, good oh. on him. <laughs> yeah. Skunk. I had uh, I rode with uh, with Brian, aka Beardo, yeah. and uh, his his Lady, girlfriend yeah. uh, from the airport in Chicago, and she's it was awesome. she's oh, great. She's awesome. She's awesome. Yeah. She's great. Uh, we we oh, we sorry. started talking, and we were talking about twenty minutes, and then the traffic was so bad. I think all of us got into a hole of anger because oh, no. we were just from we didn't where, say from where to where from O'Hare into the city, but oh, we were like right in the middle it's, of rush hour. It's without traffic. It's about forty five minutes to an hour. With yeah. traffic, we it was almost two hours. It was a lot were of traffic. Were you guys playing the Home Alone? Soundtrack when they're running around the airport. Uh, no, you should have. We were. I think I was playing Metallica. In my you don't answer. You don't answer this question, nor you. Who mm-hmm. composed the score for Home Alone? I'm going to say that's a John Williams. Yay! Nice. Yeah, Good you. job, Makuga. Even after you were sweating in the toilet. Who directed? And I just realized this. Christopher Columbus. I just realized I had that walking treadmill that I moved from this office to my place that I'm going to finally hook up once next week happens. And I need it more than ever because when I did that clap, I just saw fat jingle. (laughs) Oh, the old fat jingle. Did you feel it? I saw it. It was. It just kind of like screamed out to me. I went, hello. (laughs) The three things that like inspired me to to try and get back in shape and lose some weight was. I saw one of our VRs about a year and a half ago, and I was like, oh my God, yeah, yeah, look yeah. at the fat coming out the side. I had a good muffin top. Johnny Fats. Two was my the interview with the It Kids. It looked like I was wearing Fats a pink one, you tarp. Told me. Oh. I was like, oh my God, I'm huge. Yeah. And, this, and the third one was when we shot that mustache video for the Superman with like the Henry Cavill yeah. thing. I shaved my whole face, and I hadn't shaved it since my wedding. And that brings out the fat. Oh my god! Yeah, I had does. no chin. It, 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 yeah. it was just like a little. I look like Peter Griffin. Yeah. Anytime I shave this thing off, I go, "Oh, yeah, time to hit the trip." Yeah. Yeah. When was last? Do you guys? You work out regularly? Yeah. You, do you guys? I walked a lot. I walked. I mean, yet, yeah. I'll tell you what. I what, walked. Okay. Okay. What well, did, like celebration? Well, that's <laughs> one. But Cody sent me on a trip. Uh, was it two days ago, tri- Cody? Yeah, that sounds right. Um, <laughs> so I asked Cody comes walking in with a with a subway sandwich, yeah. walking in, and I said, "Cody's skinny. He must be walking." And I said. <laughs> I said he's, he's got the, the fastest metabolism in the Ever. West. Yeah. And I said to Cody, you know, because I know that there's one subway not too far away. Yeah. I was like, where's where's the subway? He's like, oh, it's San Andreas. Oh my god, that's right by the mall. He's like, yeah, right by the mall. I'm like, oh, okay, so that's an easy walk. It's right here. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I, I keep I'm walking out and I'm I go past the mall. No subway. I keep walking on San Andreas. I'm like, where the fuck is this place? So I text Cody, and he's like. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Keep going. It's it's. He's, I usually drive there. Is he rock? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mile away. It's 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 not. It's not. Did you close. finish the walk? Yeah, yeah. Because he, once he said it, he said it gets near uh, Chuck E. Cheese oh. or over there. And I said near the uh, Zanku Chicken over there, and he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, that's far. That's far. Yeah, <laughs> that is far. But I was like yeah. halfway there, and I had my headphones yeah. on. So he's like. So he's, he's like working with me now, and he's like, all right, you'll get there. I finally get there, and I sent him a p- uh, picture of the sandwich, and he writes back, thanks, thank Christ. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Christ. Yeah. 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 Wait, Cody, do you eat a lot, and you just have a fast metabolism? Yeah, yes. yeah, I can eat anything. Yeah. Damn yeah. you. Yeah. That'll, 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 that'll go away. He's like 22. Yeah, that's true. Time. No, I, I, I was like Cody. I, I really was. Yeah, and I was too. like, I, I weighed the same. I remember the same I found that picture of us together. Yeah. You, you looked like Cody. Now you look like Cody. I was, yeah, and then it's going to hit you. Yeah. It's gonna hit you, Cody. Okay. You say with Wolverine hair. Yeah. It was good <laughs> with Wolverine hair. Cody's yeah. one of those freaks. He'll he'll be he'll, uh, he'll be thin his whole life. Because I was a fat kid. Yeah. Uh, and then it just I, comes and goes. It, yeah. I mean, yeah. I. But if I hadn't had sports growing up, I would have been the fat kid. Well, it's know? so funny because I saw someone had posted a, a clip of when you competed. I think it was your first showdown against Bonnie Somerville. Yeah. And you're like maybe 160 pounds. I know. So soaking wet with but boots I was on. Also going through like. Kind of a crappy breakup. I was living by myself. So you wanted to just go nuts. And I ju- yeah. all I was doing was drinking. I like wasn't eating anything. But no, but you weren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just drinking. like drinking and right. working out. Calories. I was having like yeah, right. like mini- like miniature right. meals. And you were like, still in that zone of where you could do that. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't do that anymore. All of a sudden, hit like thirty two and boom. Pfft. That's it. Go by. Um, you know, speaking of Wolverine, by the way, that temper that he's got, right? Mm-hmm. We've seen Riley's temper. Yeah, uh, I love it. Now it's in song form. 
Oh, is it? Because Matthew, uh, Matthew, Matthew, what's it? Reed, Matthew, Matthew Reed came up with a song, oh, um, yes. and it's it's more it's it's Matthew Reed original lyrics, but it's still based off of the 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 American Airlines. Oh, yeah. It's a song it's called fine. "Fu American it's Airlines." Yeah. It's it's really good. it's in the <laughs> Facebook group, guys. It's in the Facebook group. Yeah. You can find it, and I think yeah, yeah, it's right there. Uh, American Airlines diss track <laughs> on behalf of yeah. Riley. Is this to do with the flow? Yes. Oh uh, yeah. Here is the song. He rocks it. Here it is. American Airlines, you bold. <laughs> Leaving Riley in the airport with no nail clippers, you testing God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got the chip for the snacks, I got the chip for the snack, yeah, yeah. We got some news to unpair, we got some news to unpair, yeah, yeah. I got the nail for the scratch, I'ma go on your ass. <laughs> Say, I got the nail for the scratch, I'ma go on you. Yeah. Been in this bitch trying to find me a play, man. Whole company you had better get in my face, man. <laughs> Might get a massage on here for the way, man. Uh. <laughs> Feel like naps all out now, son, man. Uh. <laughs> Got my naps at trying to get home. Trying to detour me to the East Coast. They know they were dealing with the beast, though. But the chat one time beat the tweet, though. I let your ass on fire on the big scope. Man, the fans go wild on the net, no. Tell Matt, man, hit it with the mean flow. Like. Get on my face, get me a plane. I gotta show the producer in the lane. Hands on my bed, I'm in the rage. It's better than the fire to eat at your lane. I can't do me like this. Sweat double lane, you be killing your name. This is supposed to be a celebration. You gonna make me have to get a bracelet. I wanna talk to all y'all managers. <laughs> I love that. Better assess these damn. Wearing the same shirt again. Yeah. How did this happen? Sad. Yeah. And where the fuck Inception. are the free sandwiches? Hey, hey, where yeah. are the free sandwiches? I got a for the snacks. snacks. I got a chip for the snacks. Oh, yeah. I got some news to unpack. I got some news to unpack. I got the nest for the scratch. I'm gonna go hard on your ass. I got the nest for the scratch. I'm gonna go hard on your ass. I got the chip for the snacks. Wow. It's really good. This guy yeah. is yeah. like the new, uh, he's, he's that, the new superstar. That's my new uh, Schmodown entrance music right there. Yeah. You can keep going. I want to see oh, Can you wear ends. the long nails now? Oh, yeah. I'll just start growing them again. Let's see how it ends. Don't do that. How does it end? Does it have any Riley clips in it? Huh? No, it's just no. that's... that's... It was really, just that sick beat. His voice is just smooth as it's hell. It's so great. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of uh, his lyric, Napsack. This guy's not famous. It's, 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 it's Ken's birthday. It, it is I Ken's know. birthday. It's Betty's also Hayden Daniels. Christensen's birthday. Oh, uh, I don't know him. You don't know, who Hayden, know Chris, you know who Hayden Christensen is? I know is? who he is. I don't know oh. him. So I'm not going to wish him a happy well, birthday. He, related he played to Star Anakin Wars. Skywalker. Thank you so much, Riley. I know who that is, but yeah. it's it's he's a nice actor that was in a movie I didn't he turns like. Into Darth Vader. But yeah. Kenneth of the Napsakian, uh, it's his birthday today, which yeah. is yeah. amazing. It's... Uh, Kenny. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing for himself today. He's probably taking the uh, weekend off. Uh, right? I believe I know what he's doing. <laughs> I texted yeah. him. And uh, I was like, what are you doing for the birthday? I was like, there is plumbing in my building, so I have to open apartments all day to help That's what plumbers he's doing? get in. Yeah, he's yeah. working. That sounds like he's a working. lot of fun. I, I said, happy birthday in Spanish for his cumpleaños, and he said, thanks, demonic Mary Poppins. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's about right. Yeah. Accurate. Sounds about, about right. right. Yeah, it's good. Too soon, though, because your band is playing next week. Um, we are also, we the other thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, everything's going to be that, by the way. Everything, well, anytime you say anything now, it's going to be, don't worry, don't call him that, he's got a band. Um, <laughs> but we we have, sorry, Alex, you, you just you opened yourself up. Um, we The other thing, though, too, is that was really cool, and I talked about it yesterday. Two things that I want to, I want to give Ryan Snelling some props, because um, the, the first is that he actually tweeted me, I don't know, two days ago, three days ago, about he was going back and forth with Joe Carnahan. And then Joe Carnahan responded to him yeah. and said, because he had said, about like, what? About coming on the live. Okay. And and Carnahan responded, oh, reach out to Frosty. And then I reached out to Carnahan, got the conversations going, yeah. and Carnahan's in like that. So Snelling helped facilitate that. Awesome. The other thing is that when I was talking to both him and Jay Williams, and if you guys aren't, if you're newer listeners to Claire Live, Jay Williams and Snelling did a After Thoughts program for us for a while. And we, they hung out in celebration, and they said they were going to do like a special, a special afterthoughts, just one time kind of mm -hmm. special. And it actually, it's up on the podcast feed now. Mm -hmm. They sent it to me earlier this morning. I listened to it on the way in. It's really, it's really awesome. Yeah, because, yeah, because they, they, you hear it from. It starts from like a f like a fan's point of view of what it's like to be around, and then it turns into just one of the boys' point of view. Mm -hmm. nice. You know, it's like it, it it just like you see the progression of it. Their story with you is amazing <laughs> because you know you've had their. It's it's like you never knew how to 
take one another for so long. Sure. And I witnessed the actual meeting of you and Snelling yeah. and the, to the, hear them talk about it and then actually being right there. Yeah. Because if you didn't know, like, Makuga would, would say things like Makuga sometimes does <laughs> if you didn't hear the show and he'd be like, ah, those fucking idiots, they're talking about this and that. They don't know what, what they're talking about. But that's not what they said. And then, and, and then <laughs> you see Snelling and Snelling walks up to him and introduces himself and Makuga gives him like this huge bear hug. And, and it's funny because Snelling was like, out of all the people that I was going to go to meet there, I was I was most hesitant about like Makuga. I didn't know what it was going to be like. He goes, and I left with Makuga being my favorite fucking person. <laughs> I was like, that's the yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. And, and I said, and and Jay and Jay said, you guys talked about like yacht oh, rock forever. Yeah. forever. Yeah. He said you wouldn't shut the fuck up about yacht rock. He said like, well, you guys went on for like As a half an hour. As you shouldn't, yacht rock it's, is great. It's amazing. It's, yeah. Yeah. But it yeah. was really cool just hearing their perspective in general because we're working so hard and doing a lot of things, yeah. and and to hear like what they were going through and observing it, observing everyone, it's really a fascinating episode to okay. listen to. You can go to the to yeah, listen to it. Go to the Collider Live podcast feed. It's up right now. Um, and what they also said, what I thought was very interesting too. You know, they have a Patreon as well. Yeah. And I think it's just Sight and Sound was where you go to support that. Mm-hmm. But they said if enough people wanted it from their Patreon, that they would come back and they would do a Collider yeah. Live afterthoughts. But they'd want to do it for their Patreon, which that's, makes sense. That's great. Yeah. You know, you uh, I try and help you guys as far as like reading comments but sometimes there is a tweet that like just it, 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 it gets me in what the happened? Garage, so yep. no so ryan snelling tweets out hey we're gonna do a special episode he tagged me in the yeah, tweet yeah, yeah. which was great and then everybody's like oh cool 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 and then some guy was like no offense but like there's just too many podcasts collider and <laughs> that's a podcast that was, it was me turd <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and i was like and then I, I wrote back, "Cool." And and then he then he tweeted back. He's like, "I mean, no offense to you guys. It's just like there's just too many to listen to." I was like, "Great. Well, you can pick and choose pick the which ones, ones you, you want. want. It's ABC fine. has a lot of programs. It's totally, you choose what you want to watch. You know, Netflix. Give is me way less too content. Many. Yeah. yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Stop making things. Yeah, only make the three things that I watch, please. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> it." That's and what I want. Snelling in a very intelligent way. He's like, well, there are just a lot of podcasts in general out there. But, you know, you can do what you want. And then the guy just kind of went radio silent. And then the next one down, which is, has totally nothing to do with it. Jake Baldino tweeted out this video yesterday. It's my favorite video oh, of all time now. It's I, I, Cody, if you can pull it up on my Twitter, I, I like yeah, retweeted. No do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. You'll love this video. Okay. This video is absolutely right. perfect. It's right. 15 seconds. Okay. So then some guy tweets, he's like, no offense to you, Collider people, but like, you're always behind on the viral trends. I'm like, you know what, dude? Like, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? What is, oh, ah, was that the same guy? I know it was oh, okay. different. Is it the guy. Street Fighter? This one, no, right here. I mean, this is right, so amazing. Hold on, open it up. The hell is this? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfect. It's a guy in a moped with a tuba. <laughs> And the, guy, Japan. and the people watching it are yeah. better. Go back like, one more time. Hold on. It sounds like a motorcycle, but it's yeah. not a motorcycle. Uh-uh. It's coming out of a parking lot. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a man with... It's a small Japanese man. With a black dude on the back. Playing play trumpet. Play 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 that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> crack out. That's really good. Wow. Oh, it's, it's like the best. Yeah, but, oh, my God. No, but we're not allowed to watch it because it came out months ago. It came out yeah. months ago. Oh, you were way behind in Vital Trends. I'm sorry I didn't watch Charlie Bit Me when it was first <laughs> uploaded. Oh, is that a thing? <laughs> is that something you'll watch? I show, yeah, it's funny. I showed my seven-year-old that not too long ago yeah. to Charlie Bit Me. I mean, we, we are older, though, than some of your guys' yeah, viewership. Sure. Well, so they, they just know more stuff than right. you guys. But, it was, it was, but anyway, the point is it was really fun to hear their perspective. Yeah. But they told a story about Ben Bateman. I, I was near tears. <laughs> oh, really? It's, oh, it was really, really funny. And Can it, you give a snippet? I'll, I'll tell you the whole damn oh, thing. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 it is great. Uh, so, and, and, and you know, and it, it's, it's worth going back to listen to as well to, to hear them do it. But it's, so they were downstairs in, in this hallway for the, the creepy theater. shining hallway. Yeah, and they called it like an old high school gym. They had a very totally. different experience with the Athenaeum to where we had yeah. a great experience with the Athenaeum yeah. and they had uh they had a good experience with Reggie's where it was the vice versa. Uh. But anyway, so they they they're in this hallway and and they were t- both talking about how they hate kind of the, the low hanging fruit joke which uh-huh. happens and they said it was made about 80 times about the about chips, the chips. Mm-hmm. said everyone's like hey you got enough chips <laughs> hey and they, and jay said chips. jay said he just hadn't but had enough of it and he was like boiling and so at the end of the match i guess bateman comes walking down you know and he's in full suit and he, and he walks past the table and he goes hey you think we got enough chips <laughs> and still and uh williams calls out yeah, it's, you're only the thirtieth person to make that joke, <laughs> and everybody starts cracking up, right? So, <laughs> and so said, sensitive. but but yeah, so this is the, this is the best part about it. So then, so then, like I don't know what, where they were going to Q and A or whatever it was, and he's standing there with some of the, I think it was Kristen and her husband and 
I don't know who else, but they were there, Erosica. They're all sitting around, and as Bateman's coming out, this was after the joke. He, st- he walks by Williams, and they're both the same height. Because right? yeah, yeah. they're both really tall, like six five or whatever. And and Bateman looks at him. He sizes him up. <laughs> looks down. Sizes him back up. Just walks away. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. And, and they talk, and and and, uh, and Williams talks to. Him. He's like, "Did I did I imagine that? Is that, is that? Is that fucking weird?" And he's like, "What what happened?" And then and they all start like cracking up. And I'm like, "I was when you hear them tell it the way that they tell right. it, the story oh itself, like God. his experience of it, it's amazing because the, the jokes like because everyone everyone's talking about those stupid fucking bags. Uh, of chip. Yep. You're ruining lives, Alex. <laughs> uh, so I got Jay with that. I walk by and go, I, hey, Jay, can you get some uh, more chips out here? And he went, what? what? Oh. You know what's funny? What's yeah. funny about that is when they talked about everybody making those jokes, I said, who do I think the first person to make that joke and really go for that low-hanging fruit joke first? And I thought of you immediately. Yeah. I, thought of- <laughs> I was one of the first. But I'm not doing, hey, can we, we have enough chips here? Huh? Right. No, I want to turn it around turn and go, around. Jay, like, there's, I'm standing right by the chips. I want to make it seem realistic. And I go, hey, are there any chips around here, Jay? And he went, what? Oh, you right, know. Yeah, yeah. So kind of you're like a, the, but it's still a dad joke. It's yeah, a pretty, that's oh, true. Total dad, dad joke. Alex, yeah. did that's you take in fact, the, that's my yeah. dad. That's yes, what he you would do. Su- you would love dad jokes. Alex, yes. did you yeah. take any of the chips with you, or you just gave the Anthony $150 worth of our money? Uh, we gave it to a few to Kristen and John, okay. and uh, I took like two. Okay. Well, you took some of them. That's good. You know, if I could go back, I'd probably grab as many packs as I could on my entrance and just throw them throw out. Them oh, it's just not a bad them no. at American the Airlines? You, you could have given, done it, that you too. given it to the whole theater. You'd still have 20 bags. Yeah, yeah. So. We would have a lot. You know what? The if staff Alex... there was awesome, by the way. What, what, what? The staff, that because I work with them for the guest list oh, and the stuff, staff they was. were great. Yeah, yeah, I think that that was, that. so what happened, So the, and they tell the story again on Afterthoughts, is that they there was this confusion when they were walking in, like, because they... There's so many, there's tiers. There's a VIP tier, there's a meet and greet tier, there's a general admission. They were there to be there for us. Yeah. And so they, they told them they were on Mark Ellis' VIP list. Because Mark, yeah. you know Mark, he's not the best one that comes to these things. Sometimes. So he's just like, hey, just tell him you're on Mark Ellis' list. That's vague. Yeah. I'm running around. I saw them, when I saw them, they texted me, like, yeah. what happened to you yesterday? Well, no, they texted me too. Not them, but the, the lady the at, the, at the, yeah, the staff. And so, they let them in. And they, well, I think PJ went and got them. That's okay. what happened because they were, because the, the, apparently the, the staff was like yelling at each other about, about the, it was, it's a really <laughs> funny story. This, the, my point is go and listen to their episode because it was really good to hear their perspective of just kind of having, because the first time they were here in Clyde Live, uh, in the studios, they were, they, Jay came by himself. And the, the guy might as, might as well have been like, a homeless guy walking around asking for change because nobody was even talking to the poor oh, really? guy. They wouldn't even show him where the bathroom was. And was I part of that? I don't know if you were, but he. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't here. I was in. Uh, I was. I was. That's when I went to Wyoming. Ah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, and Ellis, I don't. You know, Ellis is gallivanting whatever sure, the fuck he is. Sure, so, sure, so, sure. so he was just kind of sitting around, I guess. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But anyway, but it, they had a much different experience this time around. It was really cool to hear. I loved hearing them back, and I hope that the Patreon, uh, their Patreon. Wants them to do the show mm-hmm. because yeah. it will. So go and if you and maybe that gets them some new patrons. Is the fact that they want to get this show back. So go and check it out. Check out what uh, what up Snell on um, uh, on Twitter. Twitter. And if you want to get some information about his the Patreon and general, I think it's Sight and Sound, but I'm not sure. But you should check that out. It's a really good episode. And you know, and you guys should talk about it. And, and there should be a post of the Collider Live uh, Facebook group too. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this one a listen because yeah. I like I'm talking to Snelling. He's like, man, I legit thought you didn't like me. I was like, what? No, I said, it's an act, man. It's the funny <laughs> things that we do on the show, and like you got to keep up appearances a little bit. Right. And we start talking. I start talking to Jay, and he's like, man, I'm really taken aback. Like I, I just thought you were an asshole. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, but I, yeah, I talked to those dudes forever. Bought them drink. I mean, it was great. You know, yeah, there interaction the way that they describe because again I saw this and witnessed this their interaction with Roxy is incredible <laughs> because it's, it it is and and I know sometimes where she she and I, she's going to listen to the episode sure. so I want to see if she pushes back at all because I can confirm that everything they said about the interaction was true because I was as where I'm looking at the arena right now that's and where you are Riley that's where they were okay. and so what I saw was 
they're you know they're they were a little awkward and they said as much and yeah. they and they don't like to introduce themselves and they're sta- they're sitting yeah around. they didn't even say he's like hey Jay I'm like T- tell me that you're Jay from he, well, he says it on the show he says yeah. that's just not something he does he like yeah. he, he like he, and it's not you know maybe to maybe to the fact that he's weird but he he, he says <laughs> but most most everyone is just is really nice but also shy yeah and that's yeah. what everyone he said he said he, but he's the funny thing is he's the guy that once you start talking to him he'll talk your fucking yeah. ear off sure. you know but, but like but and they're also backstage they don't want to bother people because they're kind, kind of kind working, of what it was you know, and all that. Yeah, yeah so they're sitting there and I. Go, well, Roxy's right there, you know, and I and I introduce Roxy. Go, and she doesn't know who they are because they yeah. don't. They didn't show their faces yeah. the, the, on the show. They're like, oh, we've done video like six times, yeah. you know, yeah. but not not consistently. So Roxy, I said, those are the afterthoughts guys, and she's be, besides me, is the one who listened to the show the most. So she freaks the fuck out, yeah. right? Snelling's. Um, the way that he saw it and the way that Jay saw it are differently. He like the way I saw it was Roxy was like because Roxy's a big fan of yeah. the show. She's jumping up and down, but she's being Roxy, and yeah, she's yeah. like, "Why the fuck didn't you tell me yeah. that it was you?" <laughs> and she's coming. And Jay, his interpretation of it was like she was aggressively coming after us. <laughs> I'm like, that's just Roxy being excited, yeah, number totally. one fan. Yeah, yeah, and Roxy and and but she but it was so funny. She's like, "You should," have it. but she was. She, you know, when Roxy comes out, she's like a yeah. little pit bull, uh-huh. and yeah. it was amazing to watch. The th- the, when you guys were taking pictures of them on the stage, I was sitting in the crowd, and then I went out to the like the line for a little bit and said hi to some of the people that had waited outside and right. everything. And you guys are taking the picture, and I come back in, and Roxy's yelling at me like, "Somebody likes hypothetical questions." I was like, "I don't care. Somebody <laughs> gave me a book to give to you. I need to get out of here." You're not listening to me. I was like, "I'm listening to you, and I don't care right now." Yeah, no, yeah, yes. yeah, no. It's, it's... Speaking of, she she texted me yesterday because did you guys see the Facebook group where like people were freaking out because we I guess we drank tea at the, the same yeah, time or something. Thing, and I was like, we were just hexing people. It was nice. It, it was actually pretty creepy. Yeah. Um, at this, they they said that they're bonded together, and I watched the yeah. video. It's like they're robots. They mm-hmm. the two of them. They they look at their yeah. cup and they they drink it <laughs> like that. They don't say a word to each other, and then they, at the same time in yeah. sync, and then they put it down, and then they just. Like, yeah, like it's so weird. Was, it's weird. super Thinking. creepy. Can you look it up, Cody, on it's, Facebook? It's, it's on so the Facebook funny. group. Um, but you know, the, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and speaking it's speaking so of which, um, the, you know, the Schmodown in general, the <laughs> match. And again, we're not spoiling anything. We're not, yet. I was I was about to not say yet, something, and I, I pulled myself back because the one time I accidentally did spoil something, there I felt is. real bad. That's about it. it. That's all right. We'll yeah. look at this first, and then I'll actually talk okay. about the match. But here, here, go back. Go, but don't start it. Please start from the beginning. All right, so this is the this is a clip yesterday. If you're not, if you're audio, if you're audio, you, you just have to go to the Facebook group and, and check it out. But so I'm sitting there talking to Makuga, Riley's doing whatever yeah. the fuck he's doing in the back, and then the <laughs> ladies are sitting, listening, and then this happens. Then, um, you know, she just it was because we're so high together. Gosh, they said so really the work in this too, and then <laughs> like, Whoa. like look at it's like animatronics. <laughs> Whoa. It's really weird. The tears of the children should yeah. give us. But they don't even know. They, they, didn't, like, they didn't incantation exactly. drink it soon. Yeah, we were doing we were doing a coffee. silent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were doing a silent hexing yeah, on you motherfuckers. Crazy. Oh my yeah, Lala, Lala Rona. Yeah. Um, that, that La Dorina. Sleep last night? La Dorina. <laughs> La Dorina. Yeah. Um, so anyway, when it goes back to the the, the event itself, yeah. the match between Who's the Boss and Odd Couple went up yesterday. On on, on, no, no, Patreon was Monday, Tuesday. Okay. It's public now on, okay. the, on the Schmodown channel. I'm just not allowed to say anything. Please don't. Um, <laughs> but it was controversy. Christian Harlow lost. Yeah, to the, to the nth degree. Yeah. And it yeah. is it is it is very very fun and interesting to watch. Mm. I saw it was funny because there was a lot of reaction videos. A lot of the reactors got it and understood it. Two of my favorite reactors didn't get it. Went right over their fucking heads, and yeah. it was just like and, and the, the hearing one of their rants, and I'm like, oh, so disappointing. You just don't understand what yeah. it's like. And I'll get more into it next week with things that they were saying. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> no, no. And then there's one guy, this guy Nico, who I like very much. You know, Nico yeah, gets called in. Yeah. Big WWE guy gets it. Understand? He's like, well, wait a minute. In order for this to happen, this needed to happen. So this wouldn't happen unless that happened. I'm like, thank you. And the other guy's like, ah, ah, ah. That's and a I'm, gift. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, no. We guys been watching this long. No. But it, but it, a lot of people are talking. It's funny because uh, I had a couple people that are involved in general in the in the whole thing. Yes, 
unbelievable. People are talking. And it's, yeah. it's, it was fun. It was yeah. fun to watch. And, and there would be some people who don't get it, some people who didn't like it, and other people who loved it. And that's the, that was the point of it. And it worked. People were talking about it. I so. mean, I was, yeah, again, I was good. sitting in the crowd for that whole match, which was super Crazy. fun. And all the fans were, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to see. They were loving it. They yeah, were losing it was, their minds. Their yeah. minds. Yeah. It was meant, yeah. it, that, that moment and the, the, in general was meant for the live audience. Sure. And it played for the live audience. Yep. And, and it's, there are still some people who don't get what we're doing in general. And you yeah. want to watch it for the trivia? That's fine. Watch yeah. it for the trivia. You should. Um, but we're going to keep telling fun stories because it was a l- it, because everyone involved had a blast. Yeah, Every- oh, it's the best. It's great. Yeah. We'll be we'll be and we'll be talking a lot, and there'll be a decision as we made. Probably, I'm going to make the decision because I talked to Sam Levine, I talked to Emma, who are the commissioners of the league. Yeah, and I'm going to make a decision on Monday. On Monday, yeah. and it will we'll record it on this show, and then we'll actually we'll place it into the Schmodown show because I have to make a decision about what happens. So don't well, worry. If you make a decision before that, and you want to text me, just I will. I will well, it's funny because your your manager, uh, Tom Dagnino, yeah. he's actually going to be on Schmodown Rundown, mm. and that's gonna it, that actually airs tomorrow on if you, and you can get that on the podcast channel, whether it's the Movie Trivia Schmodown podcast channel or you want to just watch it on the channel. But too many podcasts. Tom, yeah, it's way too many. Um, uh. Tons of shit going on today, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. We have, like I said, we have Joe Carnahan coming in. Normally, we yeah, do an hour. Awesome. I'm just going to ask him like 600 bad, bad boys questions. We, well, we got to find out what happened, right? Yeah, and we also, sure. and, he's, and he's supposed and to they, do the they raid. wrapped yesterday. Bad boys three wrapped yesterday. I wonder what he. Yeah, no, is he a producer? No set on? Visit. He's not involved he's, at all. It he's, still says writer. Yeah, he's still on his IMDb. Yeah, okay. and he was attached at one yeah. point to direct. So it, maybe but then he it, came up with the initial story for it. Yeah, very oh, curious. Interesting. Yeah, I want to see. Are you guys Mark Miller fans? Because he's writing. He's writing Nemesis right now. Okay. Oh, Carnahan is. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Is Mark Miller like a graphic novelist? Yeah, yeah. He did Kick Ass and Kingsman. No. Man, that's Brian K. Vaughn. That's Brian K. Vaughn. My right, favorite. Right, right, yes. right. What are they doing with oh, Boy the Last Man? The, I don't know. The good news. They keep, oh, I think they the just, the, the showrunners either quit again. or they fired them. I don't know what they happened. They quit. No. The guy always calls me. He always calls me during uh, during the show. Who's that? Uh, Kalinowski. Oh. Uh, yeah, they. Why the last man? They just fired the showrunners. Right. On. But the, but it's still happening, right? Uh, that's to be up in the air. It well, just sucks because I got so excited because it's on FX, which yeah. is I think one of the best networks to do that type of stuff. Yeah. You I know, think and so like Legion's amazing. You know, well you yeah. don't like it, but I love yeah. it. Um, um, the so. thing is though with FX and this Disney merger, right. is there's a lot of projects that <sighs> were definitely a go well, that could be easy. shelved. Well, here's the bit. article. Go back up. I there, blame guys. Disney. This is a lot of fallout. This is this is my favorite comic book series of all time. Oh, this this was just written. Yeah, this was just written by by uh, Snyder. Yeah. I said, why the Last Man series has a hazy future at FX as producers exit and shakeup. McCoy was the same. Why, why the Last Man and uh, the producers say uh, to zoom in a little bit because my eyes are definitely getting old. Have have taken a Twitter and announced that FX has decided not to move forward with our series in its current form. Yeah. Though Network Insider says that FX has merely parted ways with the producers over creative differences and that it's still moving forward with the series and the current cast. Confused, so are we. It's, it's, it sucks. It's, it's, it's got a really good. Uh, team, that? it's yeah. got a good cast. It's it's. What is that? What? What? What do we? Is the mic on back there? Is it, it Makuga's butt? That they're uh, lowering down like a castle gate with some chains in the back. Look into this. We're under attack by White Walkers. We're putting the moat down. Speaking of which, you finally watched the uh, the episode, yeah, huh? I you sure liked did. it? I loved it. Good, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I watched it three it. times. Did you? No. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna it, watch it again. It's who who do who would you guys pick? To, on the throne? Yeah. To the win- to oh. Sansa. See, you know what's funny? I used to not stand her, and you not be able to stand her, and now I love her. It's I so want her weird. to kill Cersei Rocky and sit on the throne. I, um, I would I would be down with that. That'd be fine. That'd I think be I'd be okay with that. going to get blown to smithereens. I don't think there's going to be a throne. That's what my, my initial thing, and I said it on TV Talk and whatever, is that I think that there will no longer be an Iron Throne and that it will be a democracy of kingdoms. I, and I think that's probably... That would be good. I think that makes more sense because the thing I is... Want, because it doesn't really end. Because the whole thing is you got to end the series, totally. right? If you unless it, everyone dies, yeah. nah. If you oh. end it with some with just another asshole sitting on the throne, totally. you're going to be like, okay, well, who's the next asshole to yeah. take over? Right. I mean, me, I'm always doing. I, I'm going the easy route that people will say, ah, oh, that's the, the vanilla ending. I don't want that. I want snow on the fucking I don't throne. Want I know nobody else does. I want snow. No, on I mean, the I like snow. I think mm. that's a good. But I don't think he he I just think doesn't kind of look. A pussy. He doesn't look. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Yeah. How do you, that guy is, Look at how mad he the got. Man, the man came look, back. Look at how upset he is. The man came back. And if you don't, and I don't want to hear this. If you haven't, <laughs> if you haven't watched, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones leading up to this, then then, yeah. then pause it because I'm going to say something else. Ready? Spoiler. You've been warned. Pause. Great. Um, the man came back from the fucking dead. Yeah. Got stabbed by his because men. he's oh, how he was born. It doesn't mean he did it. 
What? Wait, what? We're talking That's about the witch. The, the yeah, witch yeah, yeah but like he didn't do it. That was my point. So okay, so he came back. But he was okay, able cool. to do it. Not everybody can, can, can because it's also because of what yeah, his spirit. Yeah, like, that's or, magic. Or, well, he yeah, came but, back with his wits. But there was but a it's not his sword. magic. He's but also there, fought but the night. He's also fought yeah. the army of the dead. He's twice. fine. Yes. I just don't want him on the throne. He's okay. fine. He's not. I don't think. I think I'd rather have Santa. No, I was giving it's fine. Christian. How dare you? It was, it's not, okay. No, it's not. <gasps> John Snow. <laughs> Triggered. Triggered. John Snow is cool. You better, he's cool. You better, he's cool. You better watch your he's fucking tone. He's a cool tone. pussy. You better stop <laughs> He's cool pussy. You better stop it right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's a cool pussy. You better go to the doctor. <laughs> That's better than Zoobly Zoo. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. I was waiting for that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was off Wait. my head. Oh, you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your pie hole. Do you think we can you get black it? demon? Do you, <laughs> <laughs> Josh. Do you think we can get? Josh. Do you think we can get Carnahan to say it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be like, what? In the Please world? don't. No, yeah. I won't. Please don't. Uh, not in front of our well, guests. What if we ask him to Guys. direct a version of it? What? Listen. Yes. Joe Carnahan. <laughs> Is the man okay? Yes, he's not a pussy. He's not. <laughs> no, he is not. He's if a, Joe Carnahan was on the Iron Throne, I'd be fine with that. Yep. Okay, somebody that should be on the Iron Throne. This dude won Jeopardy again last night with seventy four K. Holy shit! Saying? I forgot to set my yeah, this is my I, know. I We're watching it. it. I we went out to dinner last night, and this morning the wife and I woke up. She's like, "Turn on Jeopardy." So she's loving this now. Right. This guy. This is insane. You watched it too last night? No, I didn't watch last night, but I've been watching the whole it. week. Uh, okay. And he so is. He's out of control. 11 out straight, of control. 11 straight. Uh, the closest to him this time when they got into Final Jeopardy was like 7,000 and he had 58,000. <laughs> so the only way you win is you got to have more money. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. That's, right. a, that's yeah. a Jeopardy. How, how many episodes are he It's 11 he's won okay. in a row. Okay. So last night uh, he had like at the beginning of the game, he looked like the Russian may have been cut. And then all of a no. sudden there was this girl sitting next to him who's from Irvine, California. Hey, she, Irvine. She kept doing this thing where she like pulled her sleeves over her hands and then did like the hair, hair behind the ears. And then there was another dude that kind of looked like a guy that dated like a really preppy girl from the South, right? right? His name was Gregory. And they start going and he starts rattling off. And then he hits the Daily Double and the girl from Irvine just looks at him like, <laughs> like she was gonna punch him, right? And it was it was so funny because you could just see her getting more and more upset Pressure. every time. Because well, imagine yeah. this: imagine that you were that you, the, you finally get on Jeopardy, yeah. but you're going. It's like it's like again being a good player in the Jordan era, yeah. Yeah. to where you're like, shit, man, yeah. like this was my shot, totally. And then go run into this fucking asshole. I mean, imagine it, 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 here's a perfect example, right? My brother played basketball in high school. The guy by the name of Lavar Arrington, who you know was an amazing football player at Penn State. Then he played 10, 11 years in the NFL. My brother's like 5'7 in high school. LeVar Arrington is 6'6", 260, and dunked on my brother right. so hard. Right. To this day, my brother and I still laugh about it, because he saw him coming down the lane there's nothing what he could do. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. It's, it's like as if I'm, I'm playing soccer and Messi comes up to me and just going to give right. him the ball. Well, because, Correct. Why would I even try to fight? But, here, but the total difference of the whole thing is that this guy is playing against other geniuses. That's yeah. what I mean. It's crazy. So you have, crazy. You have your, and that's, that's the whole thing. You finally, you know, you're like you, where you want to host it. There are people who yeah. want to be on this show for a long time. It's like a life Long dream. They yeah. finally do it because they're not. They're not saying, "Hey, do you want to go up against this guy?" Like, do yeah. you want to be on the show? Yeah. And they finally do, and they have to go up against this totally. guy. And they're like, "Damn it!" But there's still that that competitive drive, and people will be like, "I want to be the person that totally. beats this right. guy." But then when once you're getting just smashed, you're like, "Oh man!" And Ken Jennings tweeted at me yesterday because oh, like, whatever, and he was like. He, he, you know, listen, it took 35 years to break these records, and I'm just waiting until he gets to mine. But, you know, he still hasn't broken the streak. He's just broken every other record. What's What was the streak again? 74 games for Ken Jennings. Okay, and, he's, wow. and this guy's only at like 11. 11. So he's got a long way to go. Yeah, but you could see at the end of the episode, I, I put it on my Instagram stories because it was so funny. So he, he wagers on Final Jeopardy. I think he wagers like 25K. He gets the $74,000, right? And Alex is like, and a six-day total of this, and... All righty, like he was upset. Superheroes, check you later. Like it was that was because they're going to go bankrupt. He's, he, I, they're not going to go bankrupt, but they're. I mean, this guy is putting on an absolute clinic. It's yeah. crazy, right? It's, I mean, I, I do have to check out. I keep telling myself I yeah. forget. I do forget about it as soon as we're done with this show, and I need to not forget about it. Dan Patrick had him and, on this morning, and yeah. he was asking him random sports questions that, like, and he knew it. And he was just like, mm, "I'm thinking it's Steve Kerr." And like Steve Kerr, and he means getting everything. It's gotta crazy. Get this, we gotta you got to bring back Josh Riley, Party too. See, yeah. see if you can find if this guy's got a publicist. Try to okay. get him on because yeah. I, I would love to give him some movie trivia. That would be amazing. That'd yeah. be good. See if we can see if he's if he's taking uh, if he's doing interviews. That would be great to get him on here. I mean, I'm not. I'm sure he's not allowed to spoil how far he goes long, but they just right. wrapped the season. Yeah. Oh, so he's so it's 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 pre it's pre taped. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is months ago. 
Really? Yeah, so I went to a taping in September, oh, and the I episode see. that I saw didn't air until November. So Okay. Huh. Yeah. That's how, how far they how, are. I you logged in under me? How are you logged in under me? Go back there. What the hell was that? Click on his search history. What is that? A watch Jeopardy. Somebody who who just told me to watch Jeopardy? Is that Alex? He just messaged you. Oh, thank you so much, Alex. <laughs> to remind you to watch Jeopardy. <laughs> thank you, Alex. See, he didn't bring he you does, stuff. He doesn't, but he doesn't, he doesn't leave me a boy. pen, but he texts me on Facebook. Boy. Yeah. yeah, I don't like oh. Alex's motives these days. <laughs> Alex is the guy that he's gonna. He, Alex will be have the, the Iron Throne. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. Just yeah. Throw oh, for throw. sure. He's Littlefinger. Yeah, he, he is he Littlefinger. Is son of a bitch, yeah. isn't it? He's filling the Iron Throne with yeah. chips on top of chips. And just talk, just chips. talking to himself. He's the Mad King. Yeah, mm, yeah. He's just talking to himself. It's not an Iron Throne. It's a chip throne. It's a chip throne. Yeah, you, a throne just, of you, chips. Just, you turn, you turn to the right, just talking to himself. What I was gonna say, Ramses. Well, first of all, they're they're coming out with a new taco with mini Doritos inside the meat, oh. so it's not a taco, taco shell. Bell? Taco Bell. God damn, that's it. dangerous. That's Second, the best taco good. place in America. Listen, I know Alex doesn't compete in the Schmodown, and I don't know if he wants to or if he's been asked. <laughs> yeah. But how good would he be at a live event with just a huge bowl of chips throwing, throwing it into you, the crowd? Alex, like a flower would you, girl. Would you at least do that? Would you? And we don't have to call you chips or give you a chip shirt, but like, would you throw chips into the crowd? Because, hell yeah. Okay, because yeah. I think you deserve it <laughs> now. That's fun. He's like, oh, hell yeah, I'll throw okay. stuff at the audience. Nicknames are fun, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell JTE that as he stands. Okay, but at us. wait. If you guys, why do you go to Taco Bell if you can just have tacos? Because they're the like same price tacos? or cheaper. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 actually, I, I, I don't. I'll normally be honest. Normally go, but I haven't gone to Taco Bell in maybe ten years. Yeah. I haven't. Here's the thing. Cody? I go to Taco Bell. Cody was there. I know like, Cody loves Taco Cody Bell. Cody was there last night. I don't go there. I'd say. I, it, how many <laughs> times do I go there, Dorina? Let me think about this. A week doesn't go by. Maybe two weeks don't go by where I don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite place in the whole wide world. Why? It just tastes good. I'm are, sorry. Are no, big, don't be sorry about for what you like. Are you like, a big Taco but... Supreme guy? No, I'm a Cheese Gordita Crunch Ooh, guy. Oh, Cheese oh, Gordita Crunch. Like, yeah, your okay. your asshole is just going to blow up one day. Oh, I know. So, yeah. be glorious. the story goes like this. Cody, the one time, when we first started working together, Cody brought in Taco Bell, and we had this like moment of of bonding, right? Because Ellis and I love a good Taco Bell run. Yeah. Back in the day when we were both single. Yeah, you Because you, you can spend $25 and be set up for six months. For forever, <laughs> yeah. right? So Put this away. Put this yeah. in the freezer. There was that Taco Bell by your old place. Yeah. Um, on, on Blackburn, yeah. right? So we'd stop there at the comedy store, and Ellis and I would have amazing stories from from the Taco Bell. Then uh, I I start dating Amanda, and she Put likes Taco Bell too. Oh, okay. she, no, she likes Taco Bell. So we went to that Taco Bell on Beverly. We were, we were out for drinks, and we stopped. And her place was on the like Taco Bell was on the yeah, way to her. Place. Taco Bell's gone now, right? No, that's there. Oh, is it still, still there. there? Oh. Yeah, you used to have a drive through. The drive through's gone. Right. They they redid the whole I thing. See, it's I super see. nice. Still the same amount of homeless people, but little, it was nice. So we go in there, and I think I just get the five dollar box. Right, okay. I was pretty intoxicated, so I didn't really check the price. And they charged me. I was like, gave my credit card, right. whatever. It's taken forever, and the man is like, we just got the two five dollar box. What's going on? The guy comes out. I got the family box. Oh no, of yeah, twenty Doritos Locos. Are you with him? Oh, no, no, I was proud of him. Okay. <laughs> so we go back to Amanda's house, and again, we had just started dating. She was. She has no idea the amount of food I can oh, crush right, in a right, sitting, right. especially intoxicated. Especially hammered, yeah. We woke up the next morning. She she rolled over. She's like, please never eat like that in front of me again. I was like, why? She's like, you had 13 tacos in five minutes. <laughs> I was just like, and I went out there, and there was only four tacos up. Amanda, like, slowly ate a right. taco, and I was just like, hosh, hosh, hosh. Right. I, I got, like, a bucket of sauces, too, yeah. and each taco got one well, full sauce. You wonder why like you that, Like, that, uh, morning, no. you know, like the Homer Simpson donut totally. episode. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. it. Looks like Lou Tarski in Animal House. Keep yeah. your uh, hands and arms away from his mouth. Hey, Alex. Nice. Is it the sauce packet collection? Look at this. Yeah. Ah. Get to the border. I Come need. On. I need a Taco Bell hat or something. Oh man. God damn it, guys. Yeah. You've been on a roll with uh, fast food chains tweeting you. I think you're. What you're, else? You're, Taco Bell's next. Yeah. Taco who's, Bell. Who was the first? McDonald's. Why the tweet? You? Uh, so I tweeted. I, I said, do love Listen, McDonald's. I, oh, McDonald's. I had a. Let me. That's my hold. Hold, hold, hold the thought. Yeah. I'll tell you. And I've said this before in the show, and I'll say it again. Um, <laughs> for some reason. McDonald's is the most delicious and had its peak at the airports. Oh, I don't know why. God, why is that I don't so know good? why. And it's I and so it good. proved itself again because mm -hmm. I because I was rushing to I didn't get a chance. I bought like a muffin on the way to the mm -hmm. airport today uh, on going back from Chicago. Yeah. Stuck it in my bag. I'm like I'll get to it. So the first gate because we got moved, but the first gate I'm sitting there and I look up and just like angels calling. Oh. It, 
uh, McDonald's staring me in the face. Uh, it was breakfast. And, and, meal. But it was a breakfast meal. Oh, the oh, breakfast at the airport, Those McDonald's are good breakfast. Too, I know. I love yeah. the bacon, bacon egg and cheese the Lord's dude, biscuit there the, with no, an orange juice. What is that? The McGriddle? Is oh, that yeah, what it's called? Yeah. It's a pancake sandwich. Yeah. Yes. I got myself a bacon egg and Janelle. They have this new thing, the That's egg why white I muffin. Oh, also, yeah. I have both. That's why I moved to the United States. That's what freedom means to me. It's a McGriddle. Did you happen to see? And I know Cody and Cops went. I also went. It's a free, it's a, it is a symbol of the only reason. The only reason yeah. you move it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the McDonald's buy our hotels in Chicago. Well, go to the White House and they'll hand them out if you, if you want a national championship. Yeah, I no, tweeted out, I, was like, I, may not, I may not like Donald Trump, but I love this move. <laughs> <laughs> they'll deport me. <laughs> well said, Darina. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Oh, I got LaCroix in my mouth. <laughs> I got LaCroix in my mouth. That was a needle scratch so, moment. That was good. Well done, Darina. Well, well done. done. Uh, but, but did anyways, you see the McDonald's? Did you see the McDonald's in Chicago? Oh no! So mean? I ate it. The, the big glass oh. one? No, no, no. Oh. Yeah, it's fantastic. Co- Cody, I didn't yeah, see we were that? talking about oh, that on oh, the way Oh, is that airport. where you guys took photos yeah. with, yeah. with yes, other Christians? Oh, okay. I went in there. Yeah. It's like the Apple Store for McDonald's. Oh, is it Damn. amazing? Like a People genius are dressed like formally. Oh, it's fantastic. Really? It's, it's like yeah. a, it's like an actually like high class uh, oh, yeah. McDonald's. It's incredible. Nice. Well, shit. I'm kind of excited. That burger. Where's that burger from? That's McDonald's. No, that's not McDonald's. Is it really? No, it's no, yeah. no, it is. It is. I tried. I tried the global favorites menu at the fancy new McDonald's. That looks delicious. Oh, Look at that man. bun. Global favorites menu. They have menu items from Tell all over the world. Shit. Yeah. The yeah, royale you cheese. know the only thing. I, no, the, only negative, the only negative thing I have to say, though, is that their toys used to be better when I was a kid. McDonald's, yeah. Yeah. Um, their Happy yeah, Meal yeah, toys. Yeah, yeah. Go back to what you were saying. Okay, so, so they tweeted. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kill it. In in high school, we had these things called. Uh, we had breakfast at our high school because it was you know if you did sports in the morning, you could eat breakfast, whatever. Right. And we had these things called bagel hash brown and cheese. You could get bagel double hash, bagel hash and right. egg, and whatever. And it was putting the bit the hash brown on the sandwich. So when I go to McDonald's, I get a muffin, I get the hash brown, and I put it on the sandwich. And I tweeted out. I, I have not ever thought of this. So I said, listen, I may not have invented this. It's just changed my life. And this is the great thing about Twitter is that the, the people are like, oh, I've been doing that for years, bro. Right. I'm like, okay, great. I'm just making a joke. You're behind the and times, dick Yeah, walk. you don't know yeah. the viral trends, bro. <laughs> so, but I said, I even tweeted out, I said, I may not have created this, but I like to say that I've introduced it to many people. Right. And it's putting the hash brown on the thing. And so McDonald's retweeted at me that we'll, we'll take breakfast innovations for 500, Josh. Oh, which uh, was really cool, that's right? Awesome. And so really I tweeted that, that, the that out. Here. And Amanda called me immediately. I was like, are we getting free McDonald's for Wait, how did they know that you were, did you mention something Jeopardy was? No, I just, I, on they my profile. They probably looked at your bio, right? Yeah. I see, I see. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, we're doing the work there. Brands are good like that on Twitter, yeah. That's good. smart. Smart. Uh, better than uh, than than American Airlines trying to defend themselves. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. Which was really they, funny. They, they sure shut up they after did. I said, uh, oh, no, but then this happened, this they happened, this happened, yeah, this, this happened. This, this basically, happened. they did what Cody did, where Cody was like, hey, guys, and then just ran away. <laughs> yeah, and that was it. That was it. Um, okay, we got some news, because, again, we've covered all the nonsense. Yeah. What what's, uh, what are we going, what's going on right well, now? Well, there is, there is still fallout from the Disney-Fox merger. You know, they're canceling production studios and whatnot, but they there was a big Mouse Guard adaptation mm-hmm. that was going to have Andy circus and uh in this it's based on a book and they canceled it disney canceled it because probably too expensive this was a fox project right. and it's one of the major uh major projects it was gonna be a big hit. budget but did anybody does anybody i don't know what, what mouse guard is but that but that that, that Sorry. look there's gonna be a lot of projects that i don't know what it is and i'm still... pissed about the fx thing though i'm pissed uh, about my last me man too, yeah. but, it, but it also but the thing is you got to realize that a lot of the projects that were going into development and production before the Disney thing w- was happening yeah. were going to get scrapped right. because yeah. the, cre- the new creative is going to go, we don't want to do that. Or in the case of Why the Last Man, we don't want to do it that way. Uh, which totally. is, what, but if, what if it's worse now? Or what yeah. if it's better? But mm. you're, you're, not, you're not wrong that it, you, it's Listen, frustrating when you have we a team. trust, have they, have they effed us yet? Yes. With what? what? Uh, Maleficent. Oh yeah, Melfi sent. There's been a lot. Wait, they, wait, wait. They, what do you mean they've effed us? Yeah. Have they, have they, like they haven't dropped a Dumbo giant turd. No, no, no. Us. But I'm talking. But this is a different property, though. Like, why the last man is not a Disney type property. Yeah. Like, this is like an adult, like sci-fi dystopian future, like messed up story. Yeah. Right. So you well, can't, you, you can't Disneyfy it. No. Well, no. You can, but you can put it on like the Hulu side of right. things. And you can do right, that, right. and that's why. I, and let them let, let them try first and see where they're going to go and they what just team got in the swimming get. pool yeah so right. i'm so when these things happen like I, i'm not shocked 
that a lot of things are getting canceled. But there, it doesn't mean that this won't come back or there won't be new right. deals. And also, no, and, and here's the thing. Matt Reeves is a producer on this, yeah. and they basically said, you can take this and shop it around and now. Do what you got to do. Are they, is it true they're doing more Apes movies? Is uh, it I hear that? I haven't right? heard There's that. been rumors of it, but nothing. Because it's funny because my father-in-law last night asked me, he's like, are they doing more? And I was like, well, again, spoiler, if you haven't seen the last one, pause, great. Um, I mean, Caesar fucking dies yeah, in the last yeah, one, so yeah. it's like you know what are you what are you gonna do with the? <laughs> you just said that so dramatically, you're like stop, pause. Caesar fucking dies. He's down, man. That was, I, mean, I was of, very sad. He was one of my favorite characters yeah. in, in the franchise. Yeah. That's in the a lot. He was good great. trilogy. I, yeah. I didn't like any. I know this. I mean, I just don't like older movies like that. Sometimes I get it. And like the white. No, you mean the original mean, apes. Yeah, the original apes. But I, this trilogy was so it was, well done. It was really, yeah. really you know? good. Well, I, they, I still think they can keep going. I mean, they could get closer and closer to the original movie. They could certainly yeah. do that. I mean, that it doesn't mean that it's over. But it right. just. If, but they'd have to basically start from scratch mm -hmm. with new characters, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, and if Matt Reeves is coming back, I'd be excited for that. Um, but Matt Reeves is going to be a little tied up with the Batman. Right. You know, so it, it'll be a little bit... I don't, I don't want them to kind of... I think that a lot of times you reach out of the original director because you just want to get it done. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can work. Just look at Stephen Cable Jr. for Creed II. Sure. Right? And, and, but I still he think was great. He was great. But I think that Ryan Coogler still had some say, but... But Stephen Cable Jr. did his thing, so totally. it works. And look, shit, it did. The Apes didn't start with Reeves; it started yeah, with Rupert, Rupert Wyatt. Wyatt. Yeah. And I remember us being on Schmoes, and when that happened, I was so bummed because I love the first one. Right. But then Dawn came out, and I like Dawn better than the first one. Yeah, yeah. And that's my favorite. The second Dawn's one. Dawn's my yeah. favorite as well. I think I'll give you Dawn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dawn. yeah. So, good. so uh, anyway, but I do have to tell a very important story uh, that I think no. everybody needs to know. Um, uh -oh. My mother-in-law uh -oh. did it again. Oh, it's oh boy. This is silly. And tell me, you usually tell me when I'm wrong. Yes. And um, I feel you're going to be on my mom, side. I wish me. your mother-in-law listened to this show. I, really I might clip this out so she so she hears it. Because on, on Facebook, she, she does. Um, so, my mother-in-law loves talking about Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but, but Easter. Easter is right. coming up, It's this right? Sunday, right? It's this Sunday. Usually, it Zombie Jesus Sunday. Yes. So usually, my wife will make the, the meatballs. And, Ooh, stuff, yeah. and it's usually what we do, and, or, or a big meal. And she's like, and my father-in-law is in town, and he had asked me at one point <clears throat> if I could, he likes when I grill him up burgers. So I said, well, what if we do, like, we'll do a grill out for Easter. You know, I'll, I'll marinate the burgers the night before. Ooh, nice. I'll put them in the, I'll put them in the, I'll put some onions in it, and I'll get some soyaki. I'll, I'll do the whole thing. And, I'll, and we'll, we'll just, my wife planned out the whole dinner. It's great. This is four or five days ago, or four or five days leading up to Easter. Reaches out, well, I'll have my mom, uh, she says, I'll have my mother go get the desserts. So what do you want for dessert? I don't give a shit about desserts. I'm not a big dessert guy. Uh, clearly um, your wife called you about peanut butter hog and does, so you may care a little more than you that's think. That's the only thing I really love. <laughs> okay. That's the only thing I really love. And I, I crushed a bowl of that last oh, night. Man. I'm not even going to lie to you. Have you had Tonight Dough? The no. Ben and Jerry's? There were no. Roxy was talking about that. Cause remember, I thought, she was being, uh, I thought she was being a millennial Dude, no. Tonight that's Dough. A little, it's a that little too good. rich for me. My favorite is Cherry Garcia. Cherry Garcia yeah. is very good. They used to have a strawberry. We did it. You're Latino. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what they said. Uh, yeah, they're like, they yeah. hate it when it's expensive. They used to have don't a strawberry, uh, like a strawberry uh, graham cracker crunch that I, I haven't seen in a long time. That was but, good. But the tonight yeah. dough, dude, is it's, I, it's rich. I get it. It's rich. And you can, you can have a couple spoonfuls. And be, it, I'm telling you, it has every dessert. Well, you could, does, And you love peanut butter. It's got peanut butter. It does. Listen, tonight dough, peanut butter, it doesn't give a shit because this is, what, this, is what, this is what happens. Yeah, so then my, my seven-year-old obviously loves desserts. Of course. So I was like, you know, we'll see what we'll see what she wants. And my, and my wife goes, well, you know, my mother bought those uh, those eclairs and those little mini cupcakes last time like, like, great they were delicious and I and I to be honest crushed a lot of those ones great. those mini eclairs so I, like, I go I go have have her get the desserts and then th that'll be fine it's four or five days so my wife reaches out and says hey can you get desserts what that's too short notice <laughs> it's five fucking days <laughs> what do you gotta do does she have to go and make her own flour and butter no she has Who to do you buy need it to call? she's gotta go to France oh to pick up my some pastries god <laughs> five days to think of how to get an eclair what do I do with my DVR <laughs> wait I'd have to wake up five minutes. <laughs> Your wife didn't earlier. ask for a custom birthday cake from like a bakery in, <laughs> in Sydney. I'm not like asking a, you to like make the yeah. eclairs yeah. or find out how they're made or do a full extensive Bring a book person report. named Eclair to your no. house. No, it's it's too short notice. Uh. No. It's not. So if I call you 20 minutes before, <laughs> it's not. Just go to the thing. We'll call in. 
We said, what do I get? We'll we'll do all the easy work for you. So she didn't do it? No, we said, screw it. We'll oh, do really? It she just said no. She was like, I don't know if I can do it. We said, you can't handle that, then forget it. Dude, don't, I, was just, I almost, I almost wanted to be I almost wanted to be like, you know what? Then she can't come over. <laughs> <laughs> no, would, Claire, no. I would just no entry. Going yeah. through all my pictures the other day, I screenshot. This was a year ago when we went on the Duffy, me, yeah. you, and Tom, and the ladies. Yeah. And I it was made Easter a, weekend, wasn't it? It, it? it was around that time, yeah. I think. But I made a, a Gilligan's Island right. joke, she, a three-hour tour, and I screenshot and sent it to you. She went three-hour tour where? <laughs> and uh, because it was completely and, and be, serious. And because of that, this sometimes <laughs> I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. I'm sitting there. It, it always, whenever I get that but, Facebook but message like, from her, I screenshot it and send it to Christian. <laughs> but, but she's like, she's a, she book smart. She's Really smart, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. But and there's I, people like that, and though. I, so you I should, have a cousin. I listen, have but a cousin. listen, this three-hour tour thing. The woman's <laughs> 75 years old. Right. This is one of the hottest shows of what? all time. <laughs> so I, I say to her, I go, Pat, it's from Gilligan's Island. What's that? <laughs> she thought we were going the, to Catalina the, the, or something. The, the skipper? <laughs> don't know it. Don't know what. You don't know Gilligan? <laughs> I mean, there was no streaming service. It was the only show on television. And it wasn't called like it wasn't called like Dave's Island. No, Gilligan. Gilligan. No, well, nobody else is named Gilligan. Correct. Except fucking Gilligan. How old is she? Like seventy-five years old. Okay, she, well, I mean, she was can, during her time. But it's probably just hard to even talk to you to, at that age. Like, I don't want to talk to you. I so, understand, yeah. but but then but again, so that that was <laughs> that was that was the one thing. Then the other day when I told you, like, I, that my, my my daughter was starting to become a blackjack dealer. Yeah. You know, and and they were playing with each other, and she's like, "What's this game?" I go, "You never heard of blackjack? <laughs> no. You never been to Vegas? Once or twice? <laughs> and you don't have blackjack in those once or twice times you went?" Didn't really pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> short notice. Short notice is ridiculous. Yeah, so. no, I agree. Okay. Yeah. You're, 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 in this case, you are not incorrect. Thank you. Yeah. You, I mean, are, you are right. You're totally not ridiculous. Hey, uh, it's Pat, right? Yeah. Hey, Pat, uh, we were hoping you could pick up a dessert. Uh, we got a, uh, a custom image we'd like you to print on a birthday cake, like a six layer, if you don't mind. <laughs> Probably put some fruits in the middle. That's a reasonable, That's I right. don't have enough time no, to do that. Based, so this is what I need to do then. Yeah. If I wanted to get the desserts for Easter, I got to ask her about Christmas. Sure. So when Christmas rolls around. Play I'm it like, out, I'm put like, a spreadsheet hey, out. Hey, when April rolls around, if you can She's get She's going to be like, what's a Google sheet? Yeah. <laughs> what's Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of Christmas. It's unbelievable. Hey, Pat, uh, Christmas is in a month. Are you getting a tree? A tree. Right. Santa, now I want to know. Santa, Santa was here. Have I met him? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. Anyway, every time you he do sounds this. Sounds like a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like he's got up here. Every time you do this, it reminds me of that scene Emo in Tommy Boy. <laughs> yes. That Tommy Boy scene where he goes, Hi, I'm Earth. Have we met? And then he goes, I don't think so. Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> it's such an underrated part of Tommy Boy, but I, I use it all the time. I couldn't believe it when my wife was like, She said it's too short notice. I was like, it's almost a week. Yeah. And I can't wait to be that age and oh. just be like, oh, I can't do it. But yeah. my father-in-law is just like, it's the complete opposite. It's just <laughs> I'll like, take care of it. He, oh, or, Jim Wilson? Yeah, yeah but he's like, but, you know, he might not always get the job done the way you want him to, but he's going to try. Yeah. And he's going to go, it's Jim. where you want me to go? Can yeah. go, can you get the, the go to the baker? All right. Three hours later, you know, she's supposed to be back in a half an hour. He shows up three hours later, but it's just because he's got a huge truck and he doesn't, he can't figure it out. But it's like, he's he's going to try. He's yeah. gonna give it his all. To He's get, probably to get got the dessert and a dead animal there for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy. That I did, caught yes. this yeah. deer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. thanks, Jeff. But, but anyway, um, all right. Let's let's. What, is <laughs> let's that, is that a break? Yeah, time? It's, it's about break. break time. All right, time to get time to get break. I know it might be too short notice for everybody, but we'll be back uh, at at eleven oh five or or sooner, and we'll be talking about some other shit. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Collider fans, John Roca here. Look that behind me. There it is, Collider Sports. That's right, that is happening. We've got some great programming on there already for those of you that have already watched. Thanks so much. we got so much coming down the pipe. We're talking about NFL. We're going to talk about NBA. There's plans about NHL. Golf is in the equation now. And, of course, the Premier League show with that I host with Jack Hind. That's been in motion for the last couple of weeks. And then an MMA show is on the way from Dennis Zhang, me, and Jay Williams. All those things are happening here 
at Collider. And look, we want to hear from you, so we want you to listen. We want you to watch if you're a sports fan. Even if you're not a sports fan, we might entertain you, teach you something new about a sport that you may not have known much about or maybe t- so deep into it that you wanted yes. to learn even more about it. We've got you covered. You can do that. And Follow us ass, on iTunes and, and on now. YouTube. You can there watch all the shows uh, or listen to all the ass. shows that you want and then leave and us comments and rate uh, the shows as well ass. and review them. And then let us know what other sports you want us to cover. Look, we're not touching rugby. I'll just tell you that right now. That's as far out as we'll go, uh, or cricket. But uh, maybe yeah, in the future, if we go Collider Worldwide, that's yeah. certainly a possibility. But for right now, Collider Sports <laughs> Today. is there I mean, for you. Take a look at it. Take a watch. Let us know what you think. You can say it like a lot of It's Perry here, and I am going to tell you about The Witching Hour. It is the show that I host along with Collider.com's Haley Fouch. It is in podcast form on the Collider Factory feed. And we also have the video up and running every Tuesday for you right there on the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. We talk about everything horror. We're talking TV, movies, the newest releases. We talk about movies that are celebrating anniversaries. We've even talked about books. It's crazy. If it is scary, we are talking about it on The Witch Hour. We also have so many filmmaker interviews, really cool stuff. It's all coming your way every single Tuesday on The Witching Hour. Check it out. Collider Factory and the Collider Podcast YouTube channel. Ugh, I love, uh, I I love, love Collider Live. My name is Amy Dallin. And I'm Corey Jondro, and we host a little show we love called Collider Heroes. I and love, it is I all of the things of we love about movies, TV, comics themselves, all the breaking news, trailers, photos, but not paparazzi photos. <laughs> all of the superhero stuff we love, all of the indie comic stuff we love, all the stuff you had no idea was based on comics. 80 years of comic lore have led to this show and many years in film and TV, and we're living in a golden age of comics, and we want to share all of that zeal with you folks. So we talk about the stuff that's coming out. We talk about what we hope is coming out. We do fantasy casting of things that should exist. Why don't they exist? And we do your Twitter questions asking directly to us what we think of certain things. And every single week, since we both actually love and read physical comics by in print, we have a comic pull list for our five biggest favorite books of the week come out. And we dive into those with you guys. You can buy digital. I'll forgive you. As long as you're paying for your comics. It's all good. But if you buy in print, you can bag them and board them, and then they're worth more later, because comics are like certain things from the 90s that are totally worth the value. Buy comics, <laughs> buy in print. Digital's never worth anything later. Buy in print. Keep comic stores alive. Or we can debate collector's items all day long. We can debate casting. We can debate movie, movie news. We can have all of our friends come join us, as we frequently do. We can ask professionals about their work. We've had some amazing guests come by the show. Yep. We try to have catch it every Wednesday. That are on these properties that also love comics. You hear what it's like from their perspective, from inside, from outside. And this is all with the focus of bringing all this news to you guys. And we're here every Wednesday on Collider. And we love this stuff. We want to share it with you guys. We'll see you then. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. That's right, they gave Riley his own podcast. The Riley Roundtable is on its new home. It drops every Thursday. The Riley Roundtable is a little bit about everything. It's about movies and life, life and movies and everything in between. I like to have non special guests for discussions like Justice League versus Batman v Superman, for discussions about wine tasting, for discussions about UFOs, and everything in between. That's right, the Riley Roundtable drops on Thursdays on the one on one with Christian Harloff podcast feed and later on Collider Jesus. Video's own Jesus. podcast Jesus. video Jesus. network. So check it out every Thursday, the Riley Roundtable. Sanders See you there. Sanders hey, everyone. John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports Podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon.
Is this Karate Kid? Oh. Too short notice for me. Too short notice for me. What? Can't get it clear right now because there they are. it's too short notice for me. <laughs> there they are. It's too short notice for me. What? Egg Claire's. Gilligan Island with a 21, What's that? 21, 21. What's Three up, everybody? Power to a where? Back to <laughs> Collider Live, everyone. And it's my poor mother in law taking oh, shots. Um, but we are back here today and uh, very excited at the 1130 because Joe Carnahan, director extraordinaire, writer extraordinaire, will be in studio. I want, I want to tell him that he's my all time like backup for any time I don't know a director in Schmodown. I'm like, Joe Carnahan. Trying to, yeah, yeah. You do, you do that quite often, actually. You should tell him that. Um, but he's going to be in here to talk about his film that's coming out May 3rd, El Chicano. Uh, but we'll also talk to him about a sh- a tons of other shit. And, and yes, we will get we will get to uh, the bad ch- boys. Chicano? What? It's uh, the movie's called no, El Chicano. No, he did. He did his Robert De Niro thing. Didn't you just do it? Yeah. El yeah, Chicano. That's, that's what I did. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, what's, you, you, still got, you still got the Eros Campoyo song on backup? Uh, might in a second. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like, it's like a, he's like a, he's like a wedding DJ. Yeah. You, still, you got you got any of that uh, Pollo Loco? This move with the wedding DJ. Yeah, you got any of the uh, Roscoe yeah, Polio 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 back here? Hold on, okay. hold on. Dude, our wedding DJ. Can you just do that from now on, Cody, every time yeah, Christian asks you for something? Where is it? There it is. Did you have a band at your wedding? Do you have a DJ? Uh, DJ. Nice. Mucho gusto, bienvenidos, Collider, en vivo. Estamos aquí con Luis y yo. Yeah, Estamos aquí con Christian. Y yo, buenos días. Buenos días. El gordo y la flaca. Is he really saying stuff? Oh, Rosco Café con Leche. Yeah. Café con Leche. Oh, Rosco Café con Leche. Café con Leche. Café con Leche. Oh, Rosco Café con Leche. Oh, Rosco Café con Leche. Jefe Colesh. Está en Nicaragua, por favor. Mojito. So good. There's a, there's a remix to it, but that's the one. It's just, it's just good. It, it, it makes you vibe. Yeah. It just feels good. It sounds yeah, good. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a good Friday. Sometimes. Darina, next week, Cody and I are planning a Taco Bell lunch. Would you like to join? Come on. What, 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 what do I get? What do I get if I go to the Taco Bell? The shits. <laughs> 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 join, join you in the toilet? Yeah, Is that what I get? Yeah. yeah. You know, I haven't had toilet. it in so long because I've been so anti. Mm. You, then Maybe you really you haven't. Yeah. Go, but, but why is, is, is it the I, innovation? No, you alone. know what? I, I feel that the reason why, and this is why I don't because give you shit. Some, hold on, hold on. This is the reason why I don't give you shit about this. Okay. Is because I feel that your hatred for Taco Bell is like my disgust of like Domino's. When it comes to like real pizza, I know right, what real right, pizza right. is in New York. And it's like, why are you eating that when that's out there? Right. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Look. Obviously, most people know Taco Bell isn't actually Mexican food, but some people have said it's the best Mexican food, which is BS. That's, that's false. Which right. is BS. Do you like Chipotle? No. No, Do she won't like, go. Dude, I will not go to Chipotle. I, I was, no, no, no. Chipotle was, is gross. Because like, there's yeah. one over here. Because I, I can go, have great. real tacos and real burritos. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Why would I go to fake it re- Mexican place? It really place? is if we were walking around Manhattan and somebody said to us, oh, let's yeah. go to Domino's. Right. So, what, you want to hit him in the head with a brick? Right. And uh, here's the thing. In my life, uh, I think that I spend money... I, I will I will spend the upcharge to get the quality, right? right. So like yeah. I'm not gonna get Papa John's when I can get Joe's delivery, right? right? Here in LA. Speaking Same of which, I told you but, crushed two slices of Joe's right. in Santa Monica. But tacos, so, a taco slices. truck is super cheap. No, I get that too, but. Tacos, it, they don't get delivered. And one, I don't, I need you to like give, I know I wasn't on that taco crawl, but if you could like text me like two or three okay. locations, because the missus and I love Mexican food, like live for Where do you guys live? What we, area? We live right next to uh, uh, El Compadre on Sunset. Right. Okay, I'll send you guys. And El I don't Compadre. really like Or just come to my next taco crawl. Come to my next taco crawl. Here's the problem crawl. with those taco crawls. Okay. They're on the weekends and you can't come? That's definitely part of it. Um, from what I hear, and then Riley and I have discussed this, because you are not human. Um, you are. You this is correct. You, you will take everyone. I am an alien. You will take no, everyone. No, guys, she's not. She's not an alien. She's that demon. She's a demon. True. You, you will take Satanic everyone yeah. to um, really delicious tacos. That that I am. I am sure of. Uh, but you'll also keep people out until about four in the morning when they have to work. I the don't next keep day. anyone out who doesn't want to stay out. Nobody's forcing you. Riley, that, I just that, start early. Riley, Riley, is that Nobody true or false? did I force you? No, no, no. She's right. She doesn't okay. force. But yeah. you're, it is your voodoo magic that gets us. But yeah. does she say don't go? Have one more drink. It's something like yeah, that. Then yeah. Like, then, then just you have more it's peer pressure. You're just doing it with just a smile. Fun, you're, yeah, you're still doing it. Yeah, right. Somehow we're at the Hollywood Wax yeah. Museum at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am I am a, a terrible subject Person. of peer oh. pressure. Like, I, as soon as somebody's like, hey, what's your I'm like, yep, okay. Yeah. And then oh, at yeah, 4 in the morning. But that's why I start them at like 5 p.m. So the old people can go to bed. Oh, oh, oh. No, so you just you just pass out at like 9. 
I like to sleep. What time? At nine. What time? Forget it. God damn it, Cody. Cody was sleeping. Nine? No, He's trying totally. to find a Rose Compoy. It's all right. Oh, right. You got it. You we already heard it. it. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> the shits. You got the shits. Uh, let's go back to some news, movie <laughs> news. We had some other stuff. Is there anything going on, really? A, I mean, it's really a slow Friday. I haven't what is, seen in well, it's quite a bit. I guess it's a slow Thursday, really, not a slow Friday. Yeah, slow Thursday, Thursday Friday, I've been looking. Um, fucking shit together. Tell That's you what comes out today, which is an what amazing is show that people should, you know what, you would love it. And I think your wife would, too. Uh-oh. It's called Bosch. It's on Amazon. It's the one Titus the, it's the man, Yeah, yeah, the man, yeah, the man in black. Yeah. And it's uh, it's, it's funny. I think my wife actually wanted to get into that show at one point. You it's guys pretty would good. love it, man. It's, it's my wife my flips now? out for it. Uh, we're going into season four. I wow. believe. Wow, it was Amazon. It's on Amazon. Just released today. The uh, fourth season released today. Uh, you know, Titus Welliver, Lance Reddick. Yeah. It's it awesome. It's it's an L.A. cop. He's yeah. an L.A. homicide detective, and each season is like one long murder with a couple okay. of different things in between. But it's Titus dark. Welliver's great. It's dark, yeah. but it's not too dark because Amanda loves I it. I like the dark shit, but my wife so much. It's not, dark enough. Yeah. But it's cool because he, he's all over L.A. and yeah. it's the it's the homis, it's the police station right on Wilcox and Hollywood okay. and like Wilcox and uh, like I, like it, I love shows like that. That's yeah. like like yeah. Uh, you're the worst. They're totally. They're all over L.A. Yeah, yeah. 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 Have you seen what we do in the shadows? The TV show? It's no, great. It's, it's great. so good. It's really good. Yeah, I mean I love the movie. But yes, yes. Okay. He and Jermaine are producing. Okay, good. it's uh, so so good. It is hysterical. I need to see the movie. Yes, oh I dude, the movie. it's like it's my favorite comedy out of like the last five years. Yeah, five years. So that. Yeah, it's true. It's so so great. It's so subtle. The show is. The movie is also so subtle. It's just, they create this world that we live in, and it's dude, it's just, it's, it's really brilliant. really it's funny. so well I written. Yeah, I yeah. want to check. It. I do want to check it because I like Taika, and, and it was funny because we were watching the uh, when we were at the Mandalorian panel, mm-hmm. and they started talking, and it was the the, the behind the scenes feature at, and Pedro Pascal, pa, uh, Pedro Pascal was talking about all the directors that are involved, and you know people getting little shout outs but he saved Taika for last oh, and yeah. he announced him the place went crazy yeah, yeah of course yeah. it did yeah. so speaking of the Mandalorian uh, <laughs> this makes, always makes me think of Brett now because when one of the it was one of the Schmodowns we were at yeah. we were talking to Collider fans after mm-hmm. and Schmodown fans and uh, and somebody was a fan came up to me and we were speaking Spanish Yeah. and Brett just sat like just stood there between us for free for all yeah, yeah. and then uh, so we're speaking Spanish and then we're done talking and Brett just goes El Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Very bread. That's very bread. That's on bread. Speaking yeah, of which, yeah. is this, and I would kind of let, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag um, for this particular thing. It's not set in stone yet. It's just something that was briefly this, th- talked about yesterday. For those of you guys who are coming to the Houston event, which is May 18th, at Booker T's Stadium, it's Andrew Guy versus Ben Bateman, which, again, if you were at the uh, Chicago event, there's a little more weight to it. But and then, yeah. and then you also have Double Toasted, Corey and Martin going up against Dan Merle and uh, John Roca in the undercard, which will be fun. But on Friday night, Mark's going to be doing comedy. And I believe you're not going to be there. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be there. So it's going to be Wedding. Ken... Um, I think there's uh, Jen might be there. The, Mark is still putting it together. Nothing is finalized yet. But he and I talked yesterday, and I think that I'm, I'm bringing Brett for crew mm. for Schmodown. Oh, cool. Nice. That we're gonna try to get Brett on stage yeah. yes. for sure. the night That's before. Yeah. So that may be a little. Obviously, Mark is enough incentive to get you out there to, to buy a ticket. But if you if you also want to see Brett's day, uh, kind of return to the <laughs> stand up arena. It'll be in Houston, so uh, he doesn't know that yet. So yeah. people people tweeted him and say, "I heard you're going back on stage in Houston," and he's going to text me. He's like, "Wait, I'm doing what?" Yeah, um, <laughs> how's that now? Yeah, because he did want. He said he wanted to go to Houston with us to do the showdown, but yeah, I'll push him into stand up. He'll do yeah. it, and it'll be great because he's yes. so fucking he's good when he when he. So good. I'm bummed I'm missing Houston mostly because I we had promised fans that Booker T was going to knock me out. Yeah, and it's not going to happen not now because my dumb cousin had to get married and I had to be in the wedding. Such a, yeah, I know. such a dumb wedding. Dumb, dumb. Stupid. It's in Newport, Rhode Island. Island is like one of the most beautiful places around. It's so dumb. Stupid. It's too it's short, short notice. <laughs> yeah. Where is New York? Just tell him it's too Houston. short notice. <laughs> what? Okay, can't can't wait him. to have the barbecue. What's yeah. a barbecue? <laughs> Meat. <laughs> Tearing my mother a lot of shreds on the air so in front of thousands of people. Um, Another FX show you should watch that I think you would like and I think your wife would like is called Fosse Verdon. It's with Sam Rockwell. Oh, yeah. Is that good? It's actually, I good? Don't, listen, I don't like musicals. We've been over this. Yeah, but you like oh, it. Oh, that means I'm going to like you it. it. What's okay. really good? What's the, what about the Sam, Sam McFarlane uh, Star Trek thing? Wait, Pardon? what? The, the, oh, the, oh, the Orville? Orville? 
You know, I watched the pilot. I just didn't like it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's confusing because it's like it's a star. It's a, an actual drama with a couple jokes thrown in yeah. there. It's weird. It's, it's weird. That we, we actually had a, a Google Doc. Uh, okay. Seth MacFarlane, everybody in the cast and everyone came. And uh, and we saw like one episode. And I thought it was fine. How so that's how I felt. Like it's Because it's, 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 it's weird. It's like a Star Trek sort of. You think it's going to be like a parody. But it's Similar not. to like Galaxy right, Quest. But you know? it's not. But it's, it's like not. It's still script. like a drama. Yeah. Which, But then they're kind of just doing storylines from Star Trek. It's like a funny procedural so almost. But why yeah. is... Is he is he acting in he's it? Star- yeah. And is he bad in it? No, he's, he's actually pretty good. Okay, because he was terrible in that Western movie. I t- I didn't mind that. I oh. liked the Thousand. No, the, the whole cast is good. The the show's well done. I just think the writing is just like, oh, this is just kind of like soft Star Trek. It's okay. weird. Right. So it's really it's not that sp- that's what I I always assumed it was a Galaxy Quest yeah. type no, show. No, no, Ga- nothing is Galaxy Quest. Yeah, that's yeah. Galaxy cool. people Quest. love Maybe. that movie. Yeah, Galaxy it's great. So good. It's the best. Okay. It's the best. It's, it's the best. It's, it's the best. best. It's the best. It's the best. It's the best. God damn I mean, it, Christian. Watch it. Why are you bringing up Galaxy Quest? Because it's the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. The best. Anything else going on or no? You know, I just Maybe found we'll this report. This this is not surprising, but what? Variety is reporting MoviePass lost over 90% of its subscribers <laughs> no, in sir. less than a year. And they're trying to make a comeback. They are. Yeah, they're trying to make a comeback. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough road. But we, look, we like, uh, we like comebacks. Yeah, we do it like a solid comeback. But they can I do never it. did movie pass. No, but I. You know what I don't like I tried. about it? Okay. Yeah. And this might just be a personal thing with me. But my friends that do have it, they're like, "Oh, we can't go to that theater, so we have to go to this one." I'm, right. like, I'm not driving 40 minutes no, just for you to use your movie pass. I'm and sorry. They, bye. They, well, they they got they got TiVo'd basically. Yeah. So basically, you know, the same thing when TiVo came out first, ones to be able to pause television, then everybody picked it up, and then totally. TiVo was left in the dust. Go by. And that's what happened to movie pass. Yeah. AMC's like, "Oh, we'll do that," yeah. and they did it a hundred times better. And Regal, same thing. Yeah. And yeah. now they have. So like, thanks, guys. Thanks for the uh, the idea. <laughs> Bye. Peace out. Yeah. And Movie Pass is uh, trying to get back AMC to the one. You get like some food deals. You, it's you get. Do I have it? You yeah. get. You just. You go right to the line. Totally. You don't have to worry about shit. And it's 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 awesome. I yeah. I, I love it. But uh, I the only thing you can't do is go to ArcLight. But that's fine because ArcLight tickets are like forty two bucks. So yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. They right. are. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, that, that, that's why they, they have their own system. Yeah, Arkland. Yeah, but um, it's good, it's good. But yeah. That, yeah. It's called tri- exploitation. You can't go my into wallet. the movie if you're late. No, poor movie pass. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then you know what we should pass. do, right? Let's take some questions from the Facebook group, and maybe yeah, we'll do a couple calls up. before we get Joe Carnahan in here at eleven thirty. Let's get uh, some Joe call in the hands. Yeah. So we'll let our we'll let our. <laughs> I got it. I really want to say it so bad, <laughs> but I can't. Um. So yeah, we we chips. Yeah, chips. Poor chips. Let's let's also get that that number up there, and our friends from Boston will let us know. But here's some questions, oh. Riley, in the Facebook group. Uh, that's a good one with uh, yeah. Endgame. Casey Dinan asks, "What's the one thing you want to happen least in Avengers Endgame?" Thanos to die. You want him to live. Huh? I want him to. You want him to live. Win. Huh? You want him to win. He's definitely not going to win. Um, <laughs> yeah. what, do I, what do I want to, to happen least, least <laughs> in Endgame? Um, you know. That's a good question. It is a good question. Oh, you know what? I, here's here's the thing. Go, kind of based off of Darina's uh, Harbinger of Death. I uh, I don't want Gamora to come back. I don't to want life. Gamora to come back. I don't want Loki to come back. I don't want a but lot. He's got of, a TV series. Uh, but it could be that could be set before the events of Avengers. It's true. Um, Gamora's I, coming back though. I know yeah. everyone's going to come back, and that's yeah, what yeah. I don't want. I, the I end want, is just going to be everyone undusting. Yeah. I want yeah. something to be final, so which I think we will get. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, characters will go for surely, sure. and it will be final, absolutely. But I, I think that before anyone before the snap, I think should stay toast, and I know that that's not going to be the case. No, yeah. I mean, you all those people, Black Panther, all these people have to come back because they have yeah, movies Spider-Man's coming. got contractually got, Spider-Man's got a movie coming out right. very soon. He's right. got to come what back. What I'd like is if if Hope he makes it they time. realize yeah. like some of the Hope other Avengers the realize they have to sacrifice themselves in order for the snap to come back. That's what's going. I think. I think. That, that's what I think gonna that Tony and and. Well, Cap. Cap. Cap is definitely gone. Okay, yeah, for sure. But Tony, Tony is a is on the fence. Like if he if he sticks around, I wouldn't be surprised. But if he goes, I won't be surprised. They're probably mm-hmm. both gonna go. Because, oh, I would think because so. together because they're kind of together, right? And yeah, it, and it's they're also, just done. Right. But I don't think I don't think um, Robert Downey Jr. is gonna want to be done. Chris Evans, I think, is like, yeah, so? I'm yeah. done. Yeah, I think Robert Downey. I just Jr. hope as long as he as Chris Evans does those uh, Captain America commercials, like in Spider Man Homecoming, oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, my yeah. favorite thing. Really, and he could still do those. Yeah, those are great. Okay, let's do. You got a phone call. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, you're in uh, Collider Live or on Collider Live. I know you hate that so much. So who who uh, who do we got? 
What's up, Christian? It's your favorite member of Dedicated to Art, Nico Rigoli. How you doing? Hello, Nico. <laughs> nice to have you. So, thank you, first of all, without spoiling the match, thank you for understanding exactly what we were going for there and really being able to kind of pinpoint it and explaining to your co-host uh, what it was. And it was I was so shocked by by the by the the breakdown to where they, it just seemed like they were on another planet. Yeah, yeah. The, the fact that Doman had to say, you guys should come out with like a written statement. It was so silly. Everything. I'm like, so are silly. you out of your I know. mind? It was ridiculous. But anyway, what do you, what do you got for us today? Uh, um, I, I, I just wanted to thank you. And now oh. I realize that I did have a question, but it's a spoiler race, so I don't think I should ask it until Monday. Okay. So. All right, well, call back on Monday. Thank you, Nico. Get to the library. you got to graduate Penn well, State, dude. I know. Um, okay, so we'll do. When you got another one, Cody, you let, let let me know. Thank you. Okay, hey, you're in Collider Live. Who do we got? Yeah, uh, this is John Graber. Hello, John. What's up? What do you got for us today? Oh, you, oh, you got, I'm, <coughs> I am great. I am the short little blonde guy that had maybe a couple drinks with you guys. I know you well. Yes, yeah. you, oh, bought, yeah. you bought my you bought my dinner on the last night, and I thank you so much for that. Were you, well, you at Four Center? Yeah, oh no. I was, yes. I oh, was. yeah, I remember you. How's it going? Yeah. What's up, oh, buddy? Good, good, good. Oh, the, the school, I'm talking to you guys. Hey, I just wanted to call and tell you, I, I know it's a lot of work you guys do and everything like that. I, I really appreciate it. Um, even outside your show and all that, you guys are very personable, very, very kind, and, and just Don't you guys tell cool anybody. people. Cool, cool people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you did, that was, well, that was very nice. Did you have anything else you wanted to uh, add today? Or, or, or you, just keep, you can keep doing some wonderful comments. Yeah, uh, you can just compliment mm -hmm. us yeah, if you want. Was, that, uh, yeah. Well, Riley, Riley, you did good with the wife. She's a beautiful woman. And, uh, you well, did thank good. you. You did good. Thank you. Anything thank else? Thank you. All right, well, thank yeah, you so much. You're at Anaheim, and... Uh, We'll have a good time again. Awesome. Well, thank you, brother. Cool. Yeah, he was really, he was, he, that, <laughs> he was that, you could, you, your that wife guy, is hot. No, but she is and it's hot. funny because he talked Can't to Can't wait to marry her. Or, <laughs> yeah, your fiance, sorry. Well, it's funny because he showed up. I was there and, he, and they, they talked about this, so I don't, I'm not feeling like a dick saying this because he's a very short gentleman, right? <laughs> and so is his, he's a, he has, he had two sons with him. And he's just like, this one I, I'm convinced isn't my son because he was like yeah, tall. He was, he was really he was tall. Like, I mean, these, the, the, he was, it, he was That's maybe, funny. I mean, they're like Al Pacino's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, but they were, the energy of, and the personality of eight feet people. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, the the energy of this guy was so, uh, he was so infectious. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you had to He was such a good he was, mood, yeah. Uh, it was Friday night, I believe, that I really yeah. hung out with him. He was really trying to get me off my Schmodown game. I'm, I'm not drinking no, anymore. No, and he was, handed me a yeah. full glass of wine, and I went. He was <laughs> buying everyone drinks. But yeah, like, we were at the yeah. Force Center podcast yeah. live on Thursday night uh, with uh, Scrimshaw and Knapsack, and and he kept buying his drinks. Yeah. He's, he's one of those so guys. He's one of those guys. Nice. Like I was, I was up. I was. I just watched Game of Thrones, and I was like, I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm just gonna have one more meal, and then I'm just gonna go to sleep because it's the it's the end of it. Mm. So I'm like, I'm not drinking anything because I want to be able to wake up. So I get down there, and, and he's there. He's there, and the place was jam packed. By the way, because I thought it was gonna be dead on Sunday night, but boy, was I wrong. I mean, like everybody was there. So I ran into Andy Gutierrez, who who hosts the Star Wars show. Yeah. We were chatting for a little bit, and there was a bunch. And Star Wars, uh, Star Wars theory was there. I was talking to him. But it was packed, packed. And as I get there, I ran into him, and he's like, uh, he goes, get it, come on, get your drink. What you want? Let's do a shot. And I'm like, I, dude, I can't do a shot. I want a chicken sandwich. And, and so he's like, let's do a shot. Let's do a shot. I'm like, I'll do a fucking shot with you. Fine. Yeah. So, but they weren't doing shots at the bar. So he's like, what do you want? I just beer. And he's like, dang, take it. And I'm like, shit. So I take the take the beer. I'm having a conversation with him. And, you know, and he had gotten the beer. And then I go to get my, my, uh, my card out for my, my sandwich. And I feel this hand grab. He's like, no, no, it's on me. It's on me. And I'm like. It was the nicest thing ever. It was the <laughs> nicest guy in the world. But it, and we just kind of sat there and talked. It was, it was yeah. really, it was, the whole thing was infectious. Yeah. Like the, it was everyone, great energy. Every, the, uh, that's the best part of the whole thing is yeah. the energy from people. Everyone's so cool and happy and nice yeah. and, yeah, so awesome. You got another one, Cody? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, let's do one more here. Hey, you're on Collider Live. Who do we got? <laughs> yeah, it's Marie from uh, Edmonton, Canada. What's up, man? Hey. Canada, oh, Canada in hey. the house. What do you got for us today, my man? I'm um, just wondering, quick question. Uh, first off, shout out to Riley. Uh, we gonna get to the American Airlines people, man. We gonna get you some justice. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Want to know? Fly Air Canada. It's way nicer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is, man. Uh, when was the time a movie got spoiled for you, whether online? I know there's a lot of stuff going around with the. Uh, 
the uh, somebody, Avengers Endgame spoiler. So somebody somebody tried to tweet at me happened. the spoiler. I'm like, get out of here. What are you yeah. doing? So, 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 what, so what's the movie that got spoiled, whether it was Twitter or, or just in general? Yeah, exactly. All right, so I will tell you, this is one I always bring up because my, my good friend, who I'm going to have actually call on the show soon, uh, John Severis, ah. who, who runs Fuel for Fit, mm -hmm. um, who as a younger was cloned from Josh McCougar. Mm -hmm. look, it, now they don't look anything like, but as younger kids, exactly like. Um, but anyway, I will never forget this. Scream had just come out. Mm. And he gets back and he's like, I just saw a scream. And I go, how was he? He's like, you're never going to guess that it was two killers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, are you yeah. an asshole? Uh, and he's dude, like, yeah, you'll still like it. Dude, my mom is the worst. Oh, she's yeah, the yeah. best mom ever, but she's the worst at spoiling things. She spoiled The Sixth Sense for oh, my oh, best friend. Yeah. Like, she literally was like, oh, oh, The Sixth Sense was so good. I can't, I can't believe Bruce Willis was dead the entire time. Yeah. To my best friend, and awesome. she also spoiled to her best friend back in the day, The Empire Strikes Back, oh, which no, is the, big biggest the biggest spoiler that's ever. Rough. Could you blood. imagine yeah. how mad you'd be? It's like, oh yeah, I yeah. Good. Luke's dad is Darth Vader. Yeah, it's not good. I gotta be honest. I don't think in never been spoiled. No, no. All right, really? Yeah. Uh, somebody hit me up on Twitter about Shazam, like uh -huh. oh, assuming I saw it, yeah. and and went yeah, and, and tagged me, and I went. Ah, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Have you, you seen it? No, I haven't. Aww. Still haven't seen it. It's so fun. I know. That's I really, really want to see it. That's why when it comes to like a movie that I want to see, hopefully I get into either an earlier screening mm -hmm. yeah. or I stay away from Twitter. Yeah. For like, well, like Game of Thrones. Uh, for didn't even look at my. Social I was media. waiting for it to go on. I I stayed the hell away from it just in case totally. anybody saw it early or anything. I just stayed away. Although the Monday after Game of Thrones is my favorite if you watch it because of the memes. Yes, people are oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. There were some good ones, especially when, uh, again. Uh, this this episode still it's it's still fresh, so I'm not going to ruin for anybody. But the, the very stuff. oh, so good. The so, very ends. There was uh -huh. the, that song that I showed you that somebody had, had done. Yeah, also, yeah. I think Rosica posted it. By the way, and I found that out on Afterthoughts too. For the longest time, uh, we've been calling him Rosica. Uh. Inaccurate. What is it? Rosica. Rosica. Oh. Yeah, he's been. Rosica. Oh yeah, I met him. At a, I, yeah, yeah. I met him. And just called him Rosica. He's yeah. never once corrected anybody, Aww. but because uh, he's that sweet of a guy, he runs the uh, collider. It's like uh, people podcast. calling Chrissy Teigen her whole life. She's like, it's actually Teigen. I'm like, right. well, when? Yeah, Since he, you've been, haven't corrected Jimmy Fallon. Right. He runs the Facebook group. So, yeah. um, I think. Uh, well, we could do another. Is, do we have our guests here yet? Yes, the guests are here. The guests are here. All right. So maybe we uh, maybe we'll go to break now, and then we'll bring our guest Joe Carnahan in to the studio and. McCook is very excited. So we, uh, as are we. So we, after the break, we're going to be talking to director Joe Carnahan, who will be talking about El Chicano, May third. Everybody, and yes, we'll be talking to him about Bad Boys. Don't worry. <laughs> There. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps from myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. 
Hey guys, Perry here to remind you to tune in for Collider Movie Talk every single Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. PT Live. We are live, we talk about movies, we answer your live Twitter questions. It's so much fun. We talk about everything from box office to all your favorite superhero movies. We talk about horror on a good day for me, and who knows, maybe even a spoonerism will happen. I don't know, that's what happens when you watch Collider TV Mock, right? Are you gonna watch? You better watch, go watch now. What's up Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you wanna watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books because TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends and tell their friends. And before you know, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. Rule of Two is a Star Wars podcast hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. It drops on the Jedi Council podcast feed every Tuesday. You like Star Wars? Good. I like Star Wars. And you know what we do? We talk Star Wars. And not only talking Star Wars, we celebrate Star Wars. We gave the Golden Lightsabers the best in Star Wars, best picture, best opening theme, best crawl, and all that good stuff. We celebrate the games of Star Wars. We do everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of debate and a lot of discussion thrown in the middle. So make sure you check out Rule of Two every Tuesday on the Collider Jedi Council podcast feed on iTunes and later on Collider Video. That's Rule of Two with Riley and Mark Fernandez every Tuesday. And may the force be with you. Welcome back to Collider Live, everybody, and live in studio. Look, we're doing a special two-hour show today. Normally it's Monday through Thursday, the two-hour, but we extended the two-hour today because we have very special guests joining us. There's a new movie coming out. It's May 3rd, and it is El Chicano. We have the director, Ben Bray, and direct, director-writer, Joe Carnahan, is here. Hello! Guys. Hello! Nice to have nice you. Welcome. What's up? What's up? What's, yeah. up? What's, up? What's up? It's funny how this kind of went down, Joe, because like uh, one of our, we, we had a guy who used to do an after show for this show, right? Yeah. And Ryan Snelling, and he tweeted out at you, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. we just kind of went back and forth on Twitter, and that's the beauty of social media now. Isn't and then, it great? Yeah, now yeah. the fact that you're, your buddies was Frosty anyway. Absolutely, and, yeah. And here we are, so we're here to talk about the movie. Tell yes, me a little indeed. bit about it. What's, what's going on? Uh, well, what should we? Where should we begin? Uh, we should begin with the with the decade uh, of a more odyssey that Ben was involved in trying to put this movie together. Yeah. And basically, he said, uh, you know, I, for years he'd said to me, "I just don't identify with a white billionaire in a cave. I don't see me on screen." And uh, and 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 I'll let him talk about. It, but he he went through a, a period of a couple really uh, horrific kind of personal tragedies. And me being his friend, his best friend, I didn't know how to balm these kind of psychic wounds that you endure in those moments right. other than to say let's go put El Chicano on its feet and I was on Bad Boys 3 and I was not enjoying myself yeah. <laughs> because I was doing the movie star Mambo which is no fun and we just kind of Ben had written like a 180 page kind of memoir about his brother Craig okay. and uh, who he lost to gang violence and we we just kind of decamped for the desert and spent a, two months and went back and forth and drank a lot of tequila and <laughs> laughed and cried and, and put the script out. together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then no one wanted to make the movie, even though the script was great. Nobody right. wanted to make the movie. And then we went out and financed the films ourselves, which and that we thought was great, is exactly yeah. what we wanted it to be. And still nobody wanted the movie. <laughs> is that, but is that a thing, though, though Joe? And, and both you guys, too, yeah. as far as it, because it, we talk about this on the show all the time, that with streaming services, it's been a little easier to make, to make smaller budget films and not do the movie star dance, you know? Right. Did you guys True. go to a lot of the streaming services to try to get it made as well, or is you just wanted a theatrical release and go that particular route? I, I think we had a sense from the beginning. It, I remember the day we finished writing it in Palm Springs at, at Joe's place. And um, he was friends with Lorenzo Bonaventura yeah, and yeah, also yeah. with Tom Wardenberg. So we, I think we finished on a Friday night. Yeah. 
Joe called him up, asked me, take a look at this, give us some notes, see what you think. Because, yeah, we'll get back to you on Monday, Saturday morning. We got a phone call from both of them. Yeah. So we're in. Let's yeah. have dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So we started the yeah. process. And I think what was happening, uh, unfortunately, with the studio system was is they wanted to change a lot of things. Yeah. And they I wanted, wanted a Caucasian influence, is what we <laughs> right, That was one of the big notes. One of the, really the guys show remained yeah. unnamed. Okay. So we need, you need, a, have you thought about a Caucasian influence? <laughs> On a film called El Chicano. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, like, should call, we should call yeah. it El Caucasian. Yeah. So it's like El Caucasian. Yeah. I right, mean, they right. had a they Pretty had much. a Caucasian lead in La Llorona. Well, so yeah, there exactly. You there you go. But yeah. see, to yeah. me, exactly. that's to me. And again, I don't know that movie, and I, but but that to me smacks of. And I don't want to go bad on that film because yeah. I know James Wan produced. It. I'm a big, yeah. big, big James Oops. Wan yeah, fan. Yeah. But that feels to me just from the surface as a he, like a hedge. Right. right. Like let's make sure we've got some white person in there. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, and in El Chicano, it's literally ninety nine point nine percent. Latino. I think my dad and I are the only two I think white guys. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys what meet, is, by the way? Oh, God. Oh that's God. A, it was it was okay, you guys want to hear the greatest story ever? This story's yeah. never been told. Yeah, yeah, okay, go. so years ago. This is going to take a second. <laughs> please, but please, take your time. Do years it. ago, I'm in a restaurant. I'm in this. Uh, we're, I was in a restaurant off Robertson. What is that restaurant? The famous restaurant off Robertson. At the Ivy? The was. No, not the Ivy. No, that's, it's, Ivy. Cl- it's one of those deals. It's also on Dominic's, the old one? Ah, Jesus. It's on Robertson. It's on Robertson. So we're there. Chaya. Remember. Okay, Chaya. There you go. Gee, that's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> so we're there, and it's me, and I'm just going to name drop the shit out of this. Gavin O'Connor, Spike Jones, oh, David shit. O. Russell, what all these crew. people are yes. at this dinner, Ray Liotta. Yeah. Cool. And I see this guy, and he's really kind of odd. You know, he's, he's, he's really intense. He's got this kind of young, really pretty wife with him. And I go, and I go, man, who's, the, who's that dude? And they go, oh, that's Ben, man. David O. is doing a documentary on him. He's a split personality. By day, he's like a, a fighter stuntman, and then he flips, and he becomes this uptight, racist white guy that tours Beverly Hills in an ascot looking at real estate. And I go, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I kid story. you not. I kid you not. True story. Holy shit. So, so Ray, is, Ray is a cynic in every guy. He goes, daddy, it's bullshit. Daddy, it's bullshit. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so I go, so then, so they come over, and we're meeting Ben, and Ben's like, yeah, you know, it's just really tough. You know, and, and his wife, uh, Christine at the time, in this kind of really pixie his voice, saying, I never know when he's gonna change <laughs> right I swear to God yeah. so I go that is insane so I wind up at the bar with Gavin and Gavin goes no no it's bullshit dude David O is doing this documentary it's all fake right and if you and I, they've never released it it's literally David O. Russell if he's ever heard it, you got, it's so funny the finished wow. product was so good Why what, was it called, it? what was it called what was it called we called it Benny Hernandez, yeah. and it was like we did we did spots with uh, everybody loves Raymond. We crashed a set. Uh, Ice Cube's in it. Mark Wahlberg's right. in it. Yeah, wow. we just thought of this crazy idea to do it. It was like a mockumentary, and it was before the whole reality TV yeah, thing had yeah. started. That's so crazy. so I see. Yeah. So this so like ten months go by, and I'm doing the BMW short ticker, <clears throat> and we're looking for like the bad guy, the gunman. Yeah. And I'm looking at stuntmen, and I see Ben's. I go, I know that guy. That's the fucking I know him. Yeah. That's him. That's it's the crazy guy. Dude. That's yeah. the crazy guy. <laughs> and then we finally meet, and we've been, you know, best pals. You guys just hit it off. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. when that kind of yeah. stuff happens too, because yeah. you guys are still partners years later. Because that's got to yeah. be around that. Because from that crew, that's got to rest around the, like, the narc year, right? Oh, dude, that's, yeah. that's almost 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. So it's around that time. Yeah. You guys have been tight since then. Yeah, yeah. long. I know. How many projects have you guys worked on together? Oh, God. You started with Smoking Aces, right? No, no. Ticker. Oh, God. Ticker. Ticker and Aces. Every TV thing I've done, Blacklist, uh, A-Team. Wow. Uh, ben was in the A-Team. Ben's in, uh, yeah, it's like he's, uh, and then we did State of Affairs, and yeah. he started directing I State have, of Affairs. I have a pretty good Smoke and Aces story, real quick. Right. So yeah. I moved Uh-oh. to L.A. my first day in L.A. I landed in the morning. My buddy's like, hey, I got tickets to the premiere of Smoke and Aces. Do you want to go? Oh, that's I was like, funny. no problem. Threw my duffel bag on the couch. We went to the premiere. We're sitting uh you know, at the premiere, and everybody's talking, and all of a sudden, Piven stands up and goes, "Shut up for my movie!" And he sits back down. And I was like, "Shut up for my movie!" Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. And that I sat like, back that down. That sounds like a Piven. Yeah, right? Shut up for my movie. <laughs> and I was like, "Welcome I'm to Hollywood." I'm gonna That's steal great. that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, hey, shut up for my movie. Yeah. Yeah. You, sh- you should have told that guy that when he asked you to put a Caucasian influence. I know. Yeah. <laughs> shut up for my movie. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But you, guys, but, you, but you guys have been tight ever since. You're working yeah. together, yeah. and now that's really cool. So you're coming in to, with this, this story, though, Ben. Tell me about it because, it's, like you said, it's very personal. Uh, it is, and it's just, it's it's and obviously it's got to be hard to write. It's got to be hard to talk about. But but to put the to put it out there, like tell me a little bit about it. You know, it was it, yeah, it was it was uh, it was a hell of a journey. It was over 12 years ago. I lost uh, my youngest brother to gang violence, and what my family had to deal with, especially my mother having to bury her youngest. It was tough, and I just I found myself starting to write like a memoir about his life and how I dealt with it, how my mother dealt with it, and we have other uh, we had uh, uh, six other brothers and sisters, and um, 
you know, so I started going through the process. And uh, as I started writing, I started coming up in the business. I started uh, kind of creating a script form and the whole El Chicano, the whole th superhero thing was kind of a metaphor of not having a father. Right. Wondering if maybe if my dad was around, he'd still be alive. And it's kind of a st statistically what we deal with all the time in the barrio in the hood, you know, growing up in a typical Latino Catholic family. You grew up family. in L.A.? Okay. Born and raised, yeah. yeah. And um, coming up in the business, became very close friends with Joe. We, we started talking about it. And there was a lot of procrastination, as you said, like you were just talking about. It's really hard to write about. It. Every time I'd sit down and start to write a page, it would just get emotional. Yeah. I'd cry. And it was it was tough. It it's was also really good tough. having your buddy there. To yeah, kind of man, he's, yeah. he's been amazing. Yeah. Was it kind of like a self therapy type thing? It was. Yeah. It was very therapeutic. It was. It was very therapeutic. And in fact, that was really one of Joe's ideas, just to write things down and and just to think about things. And um, as time went on, as I was coming up in the business, unfortunately, we had uh, another tragedy. My wife and I lost a daughter oh, about four years ago, and that was tough. That was tough. I had to take a break, mm -hmm. take care of the family, take care of my wife. And Joe, being my best friend, you know, really approached me on this. He said, hey, listen, as bizarre as this sounds, you've, you've, you've dedicated this to your, to your brother. Maybe it's time to de dedicate it to your, to your daughter mm -hmm. and finish this thing and, and, and for them, yeah. you know. So I found myself... Uh, Greg, <laughs> my yeah. buddy, my stem yeah. buddy named uh, 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 Greg had a place out in uh, New York, financial district, and I went out there four weeks. I can't believe my wife let me leave for yeah. New York for four yeah. weeks. God bless her. And I went out there four weeks in the dark, and I wrote. I wrote 185 pages. Wow. Good, bad, ugly. Out. Yeah, it yeah. came out. Everything came out. Came back with Joe. I uh, sat down. Joe dissected everything, and of course, his great knowledge of being a writer and his talent skill level and uh, everything like that. We just uh, decided uh, to go to, he has a place out in Palm Springs. He goes, okay, now we're going to dissect this and pull what's relevant, what's really important. And like you said, we went out to, uh, went out there and for, I think we were out there, what, three weeks? Yeah, we were out there, well, back and forth over a couple months, but yeah. A couple months. The script, yeah. yeah. What was it like casting somebody to be your brother? It was tough. You know what I did is everything was relatable to where I grew up in the neighborhood. Mm. It, everything was off of a look, a sense, instinct. Yeah. You know? Did you put some Caucasian influence in the neighborhood? Yes. <laughs> I tried, man. Shut up for his Josh, movie, Josh. That was, yeah, shut up for a movie, bro. <laughs> uh, but no, but that was, yeah, that was, our, that was our thing. A little sprinkle of Caucasian influence now and again. Yeah, exactly. It's like those tacos are a little uh, too spicy. Yeah. Let's get some Caucasian influence. Yeah. <laughs> Mild sauce. No, but it's, what's funny, you mentioned, Josh, like he wanted Raul Castillo from Jump. Yeah. And never, ever, ever wavered mm. in that support of yeah. Raul and no. uh, and really yeah. and Amy and and wanted them uh, from jump. And we really and that was, again, because you're not dealing with, you know, I remember years ago, not even that long ago, uh, they were after me, you know, Joaquin Phoenix to play Pablo Escobar. And I think of it now like, God, what a what a. What an absolute travesty that would be! Right, right, like, right. what a joke that would be! It'd be, it would be, it would be similar now to like Robert Downey Jr. doing the thing in Tropic Thunder. Only there was no farcical, no, joke, no, right. no, yeah. sat, no yeah. satirical right. element. Right. Right. So, you know, it was, and that was, and you know, you immediately create uh, barricades right. when right. you say, "Why you don't think Gyllenhaal was a good Prince of Persia?" <laughs> God, I remember when that was Jesus going down. Yeah, right. Oh my God! I was like, what? or Matt Damon in the Great Wall. I know. Yeah. Oh, well, that was, that was, that, that Prince was of Peoria, though. maybe Prince of Peoria. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yes. But, yeah. but you know, Joe, one of the things too, because what, 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 what I always respected about you too is you're you're a, you're a no nonsense guy. You, I mean, whether it's on Twitter or in general, maybe too much so, bro. Yeah. But 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 that's but that's what had, I think so many people are endeared to you because of that. You know, like mm -hmm. that's why I, when you tell me that thing, when the executive tells you to have the Caucasian influence, I'm like. You said that to Joe Carney? I'm like, hey, you're fucking <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But, but but that's why I asked this next question here too, because you work with your friend here too, and obviously this is such a personal story to him. Sure. Are you able to because you're doing the writing process to give your notes, and you probably have good you know chemistry anyway. But is it hard to say like it's such so personal that if you have creative notes that you don't think maybe the story's working in a particular yeah. way that you can just tell him, hey man, maybe let, let's not do it this way, let's do it that way. You know you, what I'm you, saying? You know what's great about Ben is that because he's been doing it for so long and he's been in the business for so long. His 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 ability to adapt on his feet and kind of go, I got it, brother, and not and not fight the way like you know it's not like working with a first time filmmaker because he's not a first time filmmaker. Right. He's been doing it in various iterations for a long time. So we had a moment where you know we had the movie and again like I always said to him, it's like brother, we can you can we, you can hate the audience all they want. They're never wrong, right? And so we we had screened it and people kept saying it's ten minutes too long. It's ten minutes too long. We kept hearing the same thing. And so I'd said to him, you know, it's going to cost us. And by the way, we're all, we're paying for this ourselves. Right. We're all, you know, with our guys up in, in Calgary. God, God love them. Uh, 
And I said to him, you know, there's a whole scene in there where uh, the mother sings Las Mananitas, which is a big, which is his own mom, mm -hmm. which is very kind of near and dear to his heart. There was a whole introduction of Amy Garcia. There was a whole scene with Frankie Quinones, who we love, who if you guys never seen Cholo Fit, Frankie's like, uh, like a awesome huge, guy. huge, huge Amazing. Latino comedian. We had this great scene with him. And we had to part with it. And I said to him, so I'd screened it when we were shooting Boss Level at SCAD, at Savannah College of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. And 150 people, 140 of them said it's too long at the beginning. And, uh, he, and, and Ben finally went, I, I ain't going to fight City Hall. Let's, let's, make, right. let's make the changes. So the, the, he was very, we both understood there is a movie in there. And we want the most economically profitable, smartest, shortest right. version. Mm -hmm. And I think as I go on, I'm less inclined to kind of make... 110 minute, 100, you know, like get them to like boss levels, 93 minutes and it's a rocket sled. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that kind of thinking, I think for us and also knowing what we're up against with like, they don't want this movie, man. We yeah. got to give them something that's undeniable. Yeah. And at that length, it becomes very easy to kind of sell that through. But he was brilliant about that. Yeah. Well, and that, that leads me to ask, you know, uh, if uh, reading the summary for a Chicano, you know, uh, I, there's a, a sentence here that says mass street legend. Like, are you, were you, was your goal, what was your goal for, for this movie? Like, were you trying to make a Latino superhero? <laughs> like what, oh, you know, definitely. like what, 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 what's your goal? Yeah, or or I, and also telling your story, I'm sure. Yeah, I, it was, yeah, it was, it was when you're developing the story, and, you, and like you said, like I, like I said before, this metaphor of not having, you know, not having a dad and creating this, it's 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 so many things that just started happening as we were going through the process. It's like seeing familiar faces, brown faces on the screen, yeah. and having their own superhero. You know, they have, you know, everybody has their Spider-Man, has yeah. their Batman, but for 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 the Latin base, yeah. for Latino, for the community, yeah, there's I've been, I've nothing. Been waiting for a while. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. So yeah. all of a sudden, it became. Like you, like you've talked about, bigger than its parts itself. Yeah. You know, it's like this yeah. huge thing. But yeah, that was that was definitely one of the premises. And it's funny because we, hear, you know, we keep hearing this. Like, are you worried about like the stereotypes of Latin? I said, listen, once you've made the decision to have an entire Latino cast, who plays the good guys and who plays the bad guys is irrelevant. Right. Exactly. The message is yeah. much larger. And my answer to that is like, well, John McClane and Hans Gruber are both white guys, and no yeah. one goes, well, right. that white guys are. You know, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It's yeah. like, well, the flip let, side let's right. let let's let that be the paradigm versus right. this like. Well, Latinos are being cast in a bat. Everybody in the movie yeah. is Latino. It's, well, that and that's what I was going to say because like, Peppermint just came out recently, and I was and mm. she was like a, a vigilante, but this is a white woman running around, and there were a lot of the cliches. That, that was one of the biggest complaints is yeah. that the Latino characters in it were the kind of the cliche characters that you see over and right. over again. Sure. Right. But with your film. Like you say, everyone's Latino except you and your dad. Yeah, in uh, <laughs> a couple of schlubs. But, but also, like, listen, like people ask, like Sal Lopez, who plays El Guy, who was kind of the cartel leader. Yeah, he believes in this idea of reconquista, which is we stole California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas from the Mexican Empire. He wants it back. That's as cool as any Marvel bad guy in yeah. terms of like what we, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's compensation. He has this line: it's like for 170 years, my people have been in prison. No more. You know what I mean? It's like that to it's me cool is line. cool. Yeah. It's it's big. It's grand, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I think if in those ideas and in that, and that you know, I, I always tell the story. Marco Rodriguez, who plays Jesus, who's kind of the Obi Wan Kenobi to, to Raul's uh, Luke Skywalker. Obi Wan. Uh, Obi Wan. Obi Wan. Yeah. Obi Wan. Obi Wan. Obi Wan. Yeah, you guys can make that joke. I'm not making that funny joke. <laughs> Shut up for my movie. I'll be over here. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's, that's but the but shirt. Uh, I, we we screen at the Latino Theater Company downtown. Sal Lopez is a, th a theater company, and I went I went up to Marco afterwards, and Marco's been like he was like the bad guy in Cobra. The, the, you know, the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Marco's, yeah. Marco's awesome. and he's Amazing. a phenomenal yeah. actor. And I walked up to him afterwards, and he was shaking. Yeah. And I go, Marco, what, what's wrong, man? What's wrong? He goes, Joe, I've been doing this for forty two years I've never seen us on screen like that awesome. and I get chills talking about that's it that's incredible to this day I'm like yeah. I, yeah. It, it, you, to see that in their faces it, the, the juice is worth the squeeze right. you know well the movie mm. once again everybody who's watching live or you're watching back or on Apple it's called uh, El Chicano and it comes out on May 3rd is it just theatrically right now or are you going to yeah. be hitting some okay and then yeah. okay and yeah we're going to go we're going to go uh, into the teeth of the Avengers do it by the way guys it's going to make a lot of money don't see that fucking movie <laughs> <laughs> see, it, see it opening weekend <laughs> who gives a shit right. Everybody, got, by the way they all turned to space dust they're just <laughs> the first one and, 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 and it's funny because hey, I, and here's, 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 my, here's my theory they have the time stone guess what no one's fucking dead <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming in hot yeah. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Yeah. No you are officially less. my favorite interview Never. but you know one of the things you said and I have to I, don't worry no I'm yeah, okay. uh, so my, my st I, like, I'm a big Star Wars guy and as far as the big budget movies go I mean, you're, you're aliens right this guy's all about bad boys 
He, oh. Bad Boys is his Star Wars. Here's the thing. I'll tell you what, Josh. I'm going to give you my greenlit Bad Boys script. That, that, I'm, I'm, I'll get credit it's, on the screen. It's amazing. It's, sure. But it's, it's amazing. phenomenal. It's okay. phenomenal. Here, and it's no more. No, I'm yeah. oh. His palms are sweaty right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. my wife and I, my wife has, um, I said we ride together. My wife says we die together in our wedding rings. Wow. Right? I'm so, you, it's like no joke. Yeah, we yeah. love, the, and my brother and I, uh, my brother's going through wow. cancer right now. We talk about Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2 all the time. Right. Like, you know, watch it together. It's my favorite franchise in the world. So oh when my it God. said, when you stepped onto it, yeah. I looked at him and I said, this is it. He was yeah. so finally pumped. getting Bad Boys yeah. 3. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we have a, a, a movie trivia uh, thing here. It's called The Schmodown. It's amazing. And yeah. anytime they ask a director of a movie, I don't know what I was like, Joe Carnahan. Like, I always just say <laughs> your name. Right? I, I, I love your movies, all that kind of stuff. When you sign on for Bad Boys 3, I call my brother. I'm like, it's the guy from The Gray. It's Joe Carnahan. He's like, yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> great, dude. Oh God, that's that great. Yeah, so what, what? And then when you stepped off, I had like one of those Hulk moments, kicking the stone down right. the sidewalk. Like, yeah. Yeah. With, with, with the piano. <laughs> with the, yeah, the sad piano. Da, na, na, na. You mentioned the movie star thing. But what went down with that whole thing as far as why? I, I mean, listen, here's the thing. I love Will. He's a great guy. Yeah. It's just you get to a point where, you know, I, I, you, I did it with, listen, I, I always say this. It's like Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, Will Smith. You find me a motherfucker in the modern era that's walked away from movies with those guys right. and is still working in some capacity. <laughs> I just know myself, man. And I thought what we were doing at that point was the law of diminishing returns. We weren't, I wasn't servicing the story that I was really excited about telling that the, the studio had greenlit. Yeah. And again, this isn't throw, throw shade at Will. It's your face on the poster. It's your name on the poster. You need to do things the way you yeah. want them you done. Just make a different. That movies. won't work for. Yeah. At yeah. some point, I was very interested. And I'm telling you, the end of my original Bad Boys script is one of the best endings I've ever written in any movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now, now, because it was because you know what it was because it was a it was a it was a tee up to here we go. Right. Like it's on. Yeah. And I, I tell you what I'll do, Josh. I'm going to share with you. Please. I have, I have, because I think we budgeted like a $12 right million, now, dollar, it was a $12 million action sequence. And I think they're doing a portion of it, but I had it. I have a sequence where they're on a gun bus, which is a German motorcycle. Yeah. They change it. Now it's like a sidecar. Not a good idea. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, uh, now we'll uh, be watching Batman. Yeah. Like, but I'll, sh- bro, I'll, sh- I'll send you the previs. It's Please. one of the greatest. Oh, it's yeah. one of the greatest. Kid, made his but I laugh. also had this was in the day because there's you know they spent all this money in the previs. So I said, hey, you know that they're they're, they're on the freeway shooting at each other. You know how they had those uh, those moving billboards, right? Yeah. I hated the Danish girl, the movie so much. Oh, I yeah. said, can you make a poster for the Danish girl? And they blow it apart. And they go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we can do that. I'll show you. Dude. I'm I telling know. you. No, 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 no. I fucking hated that movie <laughs> with the white hot heat of a thousand suns. Yeah, it's the worst. It's uh, the worst. It's so good. It's nothing worst. to get. No, nothing yeah. to get. Listen, I think those guys are all really talented. I it's just like hated the movie. that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that happens. Yeah. Me it, personally. Yeah. I'm sure they hate my movies. But, so you are, but, you know. so, but you're still, you're still writing credit on the film, though, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and then, no, listen, there's an ammo team that's kind of young, you know, yeah. the young go-getters, like the 21 Jump Street kids and... And, and there's still the idea of, you know, these guys being kind of, you know, 50 and maybe over the hill. And now you got to develop a mid-range game like Jordan because you sure. can't dunk right. anymore and you right. can't take anybody off the dribble. And, you know, like that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there's well still said. all that. Uh, I just don't, you know, I just don't pretend to... To kind of no, you'd rather you. I'm not going to bitch about it. Listen, I bitched about Death Wish and then saw a residual check the other day. I was like, I said to myself, shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. right. Well, you know, I'm, you've been working with this guy a lot. Yeah, Tune into all the all the projects that, that he's been working on too. Guess, and I'll see if you're. I think you're still doing it, but the, the raid. Right? Yeah. yeah. And are you guys working together? Are you working on... He's a big the time director. I can't get him. <laughs> you can't <laughs> get him. him no, Frank Torres, his partner, who's one of okay. the greatest stuntmen, one of the great coordinators yeah. in, in Hollywood who did who did El Chicano for us, did boss level for me. Okay. Uh, yeah. He'll he'll do that. But is the rate... I might put Ben in as just an actor. That's you know? what I'm... Yeah. yeah. So Fantastic. Be, how, would you yeah. Not, how would you not want to be involved in that one, too? Because, like, so... But is that daunting, though? Because, again, like, you're, you seem to be a guy that's like, I'm, I'm not going to take a project unless I think I can fucking handle this thing. No, you know, dude, I think with great... Gareth kind of called uh, Frank and I and said, listen, I'm not really interested in my, I'm interested in your version. Whatever yeah. you guys want to do, it'd be cool. And I think ours is, just to give you guys like a headline, uh, uh, Frank's character, the, the kind of main character, a guy called Zeno, Dave Zeno, he, he, he rotates back from this horrible operation, right? Uh, where he's all, you know, he's got soft tissue damage in his hands, he's got cordite burns, he's just fucked up. Yeah. And he's kind of on the edge of PTSD. And the guy's telling him, you need like three months just R and R and go hang with your wife, go hang with your daughter and just chill. And then they get word that his brother, who he thought died four years ago, is not only alive and well, but in Caracas, yeah. working for, you know. And they say, and in, eight, and in 18 hours, he's going to be dead. 
So oh, you've sure. got this yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of like a guy you thought was dead. Do you now let him die, He's or do you go get him? Yeah, yeah. And you're at fifty percent capacity. Oh, That's man. kind of the, the point of departure. Where are we at? Where, where are you at with it right now? Uh, ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, we're ready going to prep. I'll be shooting in hopefully July, August. You guys <laughs> come up to wherever we are. And oh, hell yeah. And, and Love to I'm, be awesome. Um, I'm a huge Mark Miller fan. Yeah. And you're writing Nemesis, right? I wrote Nemesis. Do you, are you done? Another great uh, script that okay. I don't know is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> by, the way, it, by the way, my brother and I wrote it. But it, but in this day and age with the, with the stuff with the president, and with the, it's so kind of timely. But I think Mark... Has made this deal. I don't know if some of that, those things, those rights reverted back. That uh-huh. he's got the, you know, uh, the, because he's doing the Netflix thing. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. But I love Mark, and and I and my brother and I had a lot of fun writing that thing. Okay. A lot of fun. So you just don't know if when no. it's happening. No. Okay. Yeah. It was at Warner's for a while. I think Fox now has been purchased by Disney. As we all will eventually be purchased okay. by yeah. Disney. Uh, uh, I'm not sure where it is right yeah. now. Okay. Um, yeah. One other thing I had to ask you, Joe, because this because we Mark uh, Ellis and I, who I started the Schmoes Know with, and we all uh, came to. Collider, we were. We, I always had this thing that January was where studios a lot of times dump movies, sure. and it's kind of like the, we call it like the toilet bowl sometimes. Yeah. But not the, anymore, brother. But dude, the gray came out yeah. in January, and, yeah. I, and I'll be honest: when that movie came out, I was like, "Why are they putting this movie? Oh, this movie's got to suck." And yeah. I fucking love that. Oh, movie. Dude, they, because oh, there's good. too many films now throughout the year. There's no more dumping grounds. Yeah. Big, no. you, you, listen, if you get dumped, you just wind up on you know, you just wind up on uh, you don't get you just go right to VOD right, or whatever. Right, yeah, but like, right. It's too competitive, and there's too, you know, there's like, you know, three and four. Somebody was saying recently, like, you know, in the old days, in the 30s, when they were really cranking out movies, they used to have, they used to release on Wednesday and then on Friday. Yeah. You know, I yeah, think yeah, we're yeah. getting back to that time where it's like, you're, because it's so crowded and it's so um, uh, uh, diffuse. It's like, yeah. you know, but, but yeah, it was one of those. And I think that's ultimately kind of what maybe affected it for awards is like when it was released and, you know, and the fact that I got a big mouth and people don't like me, that probably doesn't, doesn't help. I think you're great. <laughs> is, yeah. there, is there a movie yeah, for either of you guys that was the inspiration for, like, why you got into this when you were making El Chicano or when you were doing some of the movies? Because like, you mentioned Die Hard. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's my Christmas movie, right? Oh, yeah, that, dude, I watch it every day Christmas during Christmas. Movie. It's yeah. Yeah. correct. Yeah. Was there one of those movies, like, when you're making The Gray or when you're, t- that it's just like, that's the one that is inspiring this or something like that, that I, you always kind of think I of? I mean, brother, I think we, he and I both love Heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think it's so, so funny because so we didn't good. know, because when Ben and I were writing it, we didn't know anything about Sicario at the time. Yeah. Uh, and we're watching Sicario going, this is fucking great. He goes, who's this young upstart that shot this movie? It's Deacons. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, 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 we yeah, thought, yeah. wow, this is really fucking yeah. cool. So I, yeah. I love Denny. Yeah. Like, I think that yeah. guy's amazing. Yes. But, but it was that kind of, I think we were looking for, we wanted the film to feel, El Chicano, to feel as grounded as we felt like man's films, like Thief. Sure. And heat and kind of that yeah. collateral, these kind of really and, and and also we're also kind of the quintessential LA, you know, to live and die in LA. Yep. You know. Uh, I was gonna say, does uh, the movie have like an ode to LA feel to it? Yeah. Oh too? yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. For me it was, you know, we wanted to kind of keep or I wanted to keep also the viscerality and the realness of everything and the authenticity. It, for me, like Once for Warriors was a huge influence for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just the Mari it's culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tamori. Yeah. I mean, it's that was big yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, can I ask a stun question? What, sure. What's What's the the worst thing that's happened to you? Oh, Everything. <laughs> Dude, was, was the Pete, was the Pete Berg, was the rundown the worst one? Did you think you broke I, your back in the rundown? I think oh, I, I broke my, I, I, yeah, I felt like I severed my spine. I was, oh, yeah, my I had to do a scene with Pete Berg while I was up, um, it was a scene where, the, where Dwayne Johnson is <laughs> running from one building to another, is diving and he's hitting this skyscraper. pillar. No, uh, no, no, it was rundown, a rundown. rundown. Oh, rundown. And rundown, that was rundown, up top. Rundown. So I had to do this 30-foot fall, no Oof. wire or anything, and they want me to come into this barrel that's supposed to be a breakaway. So they, uh, they scorched it. They didn't scorch it enough. Yeah. So I remember you calling me. And so I do kind of a, it's kind of a header. So I go over the top head first, and I land on this thing. It didn't break. <gasps> oh, no. So I did a, a jackknife. Oh. It's one of the worst. Oh. You've heard everything crack. That's yeah, hard. pretty how, bad. Yeah. How long are you out of work? After the, the, the I was out of work for, for a couple months, but you know, I've been really lucky. It's been 20 years of... Just wear and tear. It takes about 15 minutes right. every morning but to warm up. You guys just put your body through so much. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. And, and, and he'll tell you, like, in the, you know, like, I remember Ray Sigley, who's a buddy of ours, some I say, you know, he had to do, like, a 180-foot high fall, like, you know. Yeah. And this back in the day was, like, you didn't, you, CG was not going to help you. And in the middle of the fall, the wig he's wearing comes off. <laughs> oh, shit. So, he, so they call the fart knocker in the business, because you know no matter what, when you yeah, land, you're losing yeah. all the right. air in your lungs, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, be... Yeah. 
And he literally had to roll off the bag, and it's like, give me a couple, you know, give me a fistful of Advil, and let me let me let me throw back Let's a beer, and we go do we go do it again. Got another one in you? Let's do it. Got another one in you? Famous. Yeah. That's yeah. why you said, "Fuck this, I'm doing direct." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get behind the camera. Fuck yeah. this. I, uh, I do want to get into that uh, the the David O. Russell thing though. Like, how how did you how did that come to be? Benny Hernandez <laughs> is that the name? Yeah. 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 How did that come to be? We gotta uh, cover this dude. We gotta, we gotta uh, release this thing. There isn't, yeah, there no, isn't no many shit. more things that are like more fun than going into an open house with no money and just acting like you're somebody. Right. It's fantastic. Yeah. But, it, but yeah. it's just like a short. Yeah, you know, we're sitting around me, Ray Liotta, David yeah. Russell. David <laughs> Russell had this thing with this guy. It's like, how did it happen? It, it was, uh, it was nuts. It was, it was a big happy accident. I was, I was actually doubling Cliff Curtis. Oh, uh, I was asked oh, to double yeah. him, and I was such a big fan of Once for Warriors yeah, yeah. and uh, on Three Kings. Okay. And he okay. knew uh, I had a boxing background. My brother John, my brother John was on the U.S. Olympic team with Oscar De La Hoya and oh, nice. Mosley, so he was a huge boxing fan. And so we met on set, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> I was part of the whole George Clooney incident that happened. Oh, were you really? Yeah. I was there. <laughs> Did George really pop him in the head? No, nah, they just oh, okay. both grabbed each other oh, okay. and just shit talked. They okay. said, "Shut up for my movie! Shut up! Shut up! You <laughs> shut up for my movie!" So good. So there's just so many of those reports that yeah. it's like he, he, no, he no, knocked them out. Yeah. They're they're yeah. they're you know forehead against right. forehead. Okay. We broke it up the okay. whole deal. But he had this thing where he wanted to learn how to box. So, <laughs> so when we wrapped, he goes, "I'm going to call you the next day while I'm editing. You're going to come down to Warner Hollywood." We just start working out. Let's yeah, train. Yeah, yeah. So I just started training him, hitting the focus mitts, and became really close friends. And we just started talking about this idea, and we just started shooting it. It's amazing. And then through him, I met Joe, and I met Gavin, and Spike Jones, and all these guys, and Joe became you my see, mentor. You got to see because Ben's an unbelievably underrated actor. Like I kept trying to get him in El Chicano; he was too busy, but he's so good. You know, yeah. it's like well, uh, that, was, that was my acting school. With, that was, with, by the way, if you see Three Kings, the young, the young Arab man with the jeans with that the runs jeans into grunting, running, that's Ben. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> The young, that young, handsome Arab. <laughs> you, guys, you guys both need to come on again because we yeah. have oh, to pleasure, hours. Bro. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. Love ben back. and Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, guys, guys. the movie comes thank out you. on May 3rd. It's El Chicano. Uh, go and check it out. Because like I said, it's, it's the fact that we talk about this all the time. These dudes put their own money into it because it's passion. It's a passion project. Yeah. It's something very near and dear to Ben uh, and Joe, obviously, very passionate about it. And you guys should check it out because I want to see it. I'm very excited to see yeah. uh, the, the movie. So and if it and doesn't it work, out. guys, we only owe millions of dollars to people. <laughs> yeah. no, big deal. Yeah. Yeah. no big deal. No pressure. And that's it. And that's it. So, guys, listen, this was the, a fun, full week. We're happy to be back from Chicago. Really excited to be back. And then next week, a lot of fun guests. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts to Collider Live. Do it on Stitcher and Spotify, the whole deal. And if you aren't already, subscribe to Collider Video. And we will check you out on Monday. See you later, Mother Fs. <laughs>